good evening everyone we are here for a discussion of uh, current affairs questions today is the third session in this series this is for the aspirants who are appearing in 2023 prelims examination of upsc csc this year right and today is the third topic and it is based on map locations and the places in news this entire program was initiated on 10th and today is the third lecture every monday and friday we are scheduling lectures on one of the other topics today is the section on map work we will be discussing in total 30 questions on this particular topic which will be focused on map work i will be showing you map i will be uh, explaining you the location the geopolitical and the geo strategic strategic importance of that particular location and whatever uh, critical geographical features that are associated with that particular region it is a 30 questions based uh, session for today starting with question number 1 Now, question number one is on United Nations Environment Program, UNEP, was established as an outcome of which of the following? Now, first of all, in this session, we are conducting this session for you, experience, just so that you may have an idea that how UPSC pick up the topic. What is the what is the technique which is used? Now, why there can be a question on United Nations Environment Program? Because it is almost 50 years of establishment june 1972 unep was established and it has asked about the protocol or the conferences in which this particular organization got formed why united nations environment program is so very important ramsar convention wetlands sites convention on international trade in endangered endangered species of flora and fauna all multiple number of conventions related to climate logic related to environment has been taken up by unep all these programs have been operationalized or have been had been initiated under the umbrella organization that is united nations environment program and this year question is because 50 years of establishment of this particular organization that is unep so stockholm conference 1972 montreal protocol 1987 Rio de Janeiro summit 1992 and Vienna convention 1985 now the question arises how to answer or if you are not knowing the answer then how will you derive an answer for that particular question first of all have a look at a map of this particular region that is scandinavian peninsula finland norway sweden norway sweden and finland these three countries are specifically called as part of scandinavian peninsula in general only norway and sweden can be considered as a part of scandinavian peninsula and sometimes finland is not considered a part and parcel of that stockholm is located in sweden sweden norway finland this region was at limelight recently finland uh, joined nato north atlantic treaty organization very recently and so this region is at limelight In 1972, the conference was held at Stockholm, at Stockholm of Sweden, that is the capital of Sweden, where this particular program was formulated. Right in 2022, in the first week of June, 50 years were completed, and on 5th of June 2022, there was a prelims examination. This year, there is an expectation that a question may be asked on United Nations Environment Program. It may be a location based question it may be a conference based question it may be any other aspect of unep but unep becomes important centric for your preparation in 2020 for 2023 prelims examination now montreal protocol 1987 it is something very common it has remained in news throughout last few decades montreal protocol is related to conservation of ozone that to conservation of stratospheric ozone ozone hole was detected over the region of antarctica ozone dent was detected over the region of arctic and so montreal protocol took place it got signed by all the countries in 1989 and till now even up till 2023 montreal protocol is considered as one of the best followed treaty internationally no other treaties had been so very successful be it paris protocol be it any of the climatic protocols montreal protocol has been most successful rio de janeiro earth summit Stockholm Convention took place in 1972. 20 years later, Rio de Janeiro Summit in 1992. NCERT Class 10th Rio de Janeiro Summit 1992 textbook on geography. It is mentioned over there. It is called as the Earth Summit. Sustainable development. The concept of sustainable development got evolved in this particular summit, that is Rio de Janeiro Earth Summit. Agenda 21. 
that is every country will devise its own agenda 21 21.1 program for climate control for resource conservation that was at rio de janeiro earth summit 20 years after stockholm conference vienna convention 1985 it is again a very common convention that was also for ozone layer protection that was in 1985 however vienna convention is known for number of treaties vienna has been a center for discussion on various topics but 1985 convention was practically for this very purpose however the demand of the question united nations environment program was established as an outcome of which of the following stockholm conference option a shall be the right answer looking at a map of this particular region that in norway sweden and finland why is it important russia ukraine crisis going on finland country over here have a look this particular country is finland and it shares the border with russia this country finland has officially joined in completeness in totality it is now a part and parcel of north atlantic treaty organization north atlantic treaty organization was one of the reasons as cited by vladimir putin for <coughs> launching an attack against ukraine and finland another neighbor of russia joins hand with nato so this region is at the center of discussion it is in the limelight and you can expect a question from this particular region in the coming years prelims examination that is 28th of may 2023 sweden norway these countries basically they are all part of nordic country nordic group of countries stockholm over here this is the capital of sweden oslo is the capital of norway here you are having helsinki the capital of and this region is at the center of discussion and so you need to work on that you need to prepare on that next question the next question is on uh, <coughs> amazon forest amazon forest fire has destroyed a large section of the rain forest in 2022 amazon forest fire was very much in news throughout the year hindu paper section on uh, text and context section on editorial was flooded with the news of amazon forest fire it started somewhere in 2021 and it is continuing even to this day so amazon forest fire has destroyed a large section of the rain forest in 2022 in this context which of the following country witnessed maximum damage the question is pretty simple but the objective of putting this question over here is that to bring your interest to know, so that you people may uh, know the focus area that why amazon green forest is very important now the question arises what is the importance of amazon green forest if you look at this particular map if you look at the physiographic divisions of south america this particular region marked over here this is known by a single term that is called as selvas selvas is called as the largest rainforest of the world it is called as lungs of the ocean uh, lungs of the earth it is called as untamed amazonians because they are still untouched they are not much interfered by the human beings that is the largest rainforest that is the equatorial rainforest that is present on the surface of our planet or that is selvas other important geographical important locations as far as vegetation is concerned we are having mato grosso over here we are having brazilian highlands over here sertao over here gran chaco over here that is equivalent to land of big game hunting pampas grassland one of the temperate grasslands over here yasuri national park in the country equator venezuela is also having <coughs> lenos area that is the elephant grass area it means this entire continent of south america and if not in totality almost 50 to 60% continent of south america is very much important centric for the sustenance of weather for the sustenance of climate of our planet earth and if this forest is destroyed if this forest is vanished due to any of the reasons be that anthropogenic reason or be that a natural re uh, reason if something like that hap happens then it will be very harmful for the overall humanity so 
rain uh, forest fires are taking place in this section of selvas and so it is very much centric it has attracted the uh, attention of the world that is selvas now if you look at the political map of this particular region here we are having the country that is called as colombia ecuador peru bolivia paraguay uruguay they are in the southern part we are not concerned with that in the northern part we are having small small countries that is uh, georgetown suriname paramaribo french guiana and the largest country over here is brazil if selvas rain forests are catching fire or if they will catch fire maximum destruction will be caused to the, this particular country that is brazil so the answer to our question amazon forest had destroyed a large section of the rain forest in 2022 in this context which of the following country witnessed maximum damage so ecuador is two very smaller country in terms of length and breadth in terms of size as compared to brazil colombia is also very small country venezuela is also a very small country in comparison to brazil brazil is the fifth largest country of the world the largest country of the world russia canada usa china and the fifth is brazil india is the seventh largest so maximum destruction has taken place in this particular country that is brazil <clears throat> there was a change of political party in brazil new government shown in and the new government has committed to provide a means of livelihood to the tribal people to the local people who reside in this particular region of amazon rainforest so the forest fires of amazon are also linked it is just a uh, assessment they no proof of that it is linked to the new uh, power regime that is enjoying the power in this particular country that is brazil however preservation of this region is very much required again if we look at this particular map then on this particular map there are a certain, a certain other important geographical uh, features which are very important as i explained you that is related to vegetation mato grosso over here Katinga somewhere over here, Sertao somewhere over here. These are the regions that are uh, which are known for having comparatively arid type of vegetation. It is dry scrubland type of vegetation, not as green as selvas, but yet vegetation is there. Further moving south, this is called as Gran Chaco. You all must have seen on Discovery Channel that uh, carnivores hunt herb herbivores, herbivorous animals. All that land of big game hunting, all that video shooting is carried out in this particular region that is called as Grand Chaco. For the south of Grand Chaco, it is not mentioned in this particular map. It is called as Entre Rios. Entre Rios is equivalent to Doha. What is Doha? You must be knowing in India, land between two rivers. One of the river, if one of the river is tribu uh, tributary of another river, then the land in between these two rivers is called as Doha. Do 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 stands for two a b a stands for water so land between two water is known as doha entry rios is basically a synonym for doha which is found in this particular region further moving south this is the region of pampas pampas grassland that is a temperate grassland of the world this pampas grassland is known for production of food grains wheat corn rice every type of food grain is grown in this particular region and the capitals of argentina and uruguay that is buenos aires and montevideo they become the largest grain exporting port of this particular region further moving south another geographical factor which is important is patagonia patagonia is a cold desert that is located on the windward side of the andes if you look at this particular map then this is the location of andes mountain range andes are wider in the center they taper towards the south and taper towards the north and further they divide into three cordilleras eastern western and central cordillera and then continue as rockies in north america on the windward side of these andes the presentation the presence of this desert patagonia is there the land in between patagonia and pampas work as a loess even you uh, you can also conclude that the southern part of the pampas work as a loess now what do we mean by this particular term that is called as loess calcium plus carbonate material when the wind blow from the sand it carries the calcium plus carbonate material that calcium and carbonate material blows along with the sand from where from this region of patagonia desert and gets deposited after covering covering some horizontal uh, distance along with the wind and this calcium and carbonate deposit results in the formation of 
loess loess is considered as a very fertile ground number of loess are present throughout the world the most prominent one manchurian loess heard about paneer manchurian heard about chicken manchurian these dishes are prepared because there is a place called manchurian in the region of china and that region is known for growth of vegetables and from there this dish originated and so we are having manchurian as one of the cuisines that are available in the continental menu part loess is a fertile ground that is formed by calcium and carbonate deposits along with the deposition of sand it favors all types of agriculture and primarily fruits and vegetables so this southern part of pampas is known as loess scrolling down to the third question tonga underwater volcanic eruption of 2022 was so massive that is that it caused tsunami waves in many regions what is the location of tonga island now tonga volcanic eruption a massive volcanic eruption that took place in the first half of rather in the start of 2022 that is last year that took place the question is asking about the location of tonga volcanic eruption you need to understand why a volcanic eruption is so very centric why the disasters are so very centric if we talk about this particular year 2023 only or starting from last year up till this year turkey earthquake turkey syria earthquake land subsidence in joshimat number of volcanic eruptions one of them was tonga volcanic eruption resulting in the creation of tsunami all these events are taking place landslides avalanche are taking place on almost daily basis in one or the other parts of the world so the frequency the quantity the number of natural disasters or the critical geographical uh, features are slowly increasing with the passage of time with year after year why it is attributed or related to the change in climate however tonga underwater volcanic eruption of 2022 was such a massive volcanic eruption that it took place in some part of southern pacific some part of southern pacific we had this volcanic eruption and this eruption was so very massive so very large so very huge that it transferred the shock waves not only in the surrounding region but as far as the coastal area of north america the coastal area of south america and australia was no doubt impacted by this tonga volcanic eruption but something happening in south pacific and the tremors traveling even to north america it is something very big that was tonga volcanic eruption the question is asking about what is the location of tonga island tonga is an island that is located and the options are south eastern pacific south western pacific north eastern pacific and north western pacific have a look at a map of this particular region that is called as tonga island this is the location of tonga island here you are having this country that is australia here is the region this is the region of south america this is the region of north america here you are having the region of asia pacific and this is tonga so if you look at the pacific generally when we look at the map then the right hand side of the map is called as eastern side the west uh, the left hand side is called if you are looking from the front then the left hand side is called as western side but when we look at the pacific it occupies almost 1 by 3rd of the globe and so when you look at the pacific on a globe then you are not able to witness the land either on the american side or on the asian side or the oceania side and so entire pacific is having its own east and west so the area of the pacific along the coastal area of north america and south america is called as eastern pacific and along asia pacific it is called as western pacific this is the location of tongo and so this area falls in the region of south western pacific <clears throat> coming back to our question Tonga underwater water volcanic eruption of 2022 was so massive that it caused tsunami waves in many regions what is the location of tonga island answer shall be south pacific and in south eastern part or western part we just now uh, saw that it is south western pacific ocean now comes the importance of this particular region as this map is depicting this red or the orange color line which you might must be noticing on your screens this line is representing which is called as ring of fire the pacific ring of fire 
is present over here. Why Pacific Ring of Fire is present over here? Because excessive, massive convergence is taking place. Convergence between the oceanic, oceanic plates, convergence between the oceanic continental plates. On the side of Eastern Pacific, on the side of North America and South America, Pacific plate is subducting below the North American plate. And here also the subduction is taking place. Here the Cocos plate and the Nazca plate, which are in itself a part of Pacific plate. They are the minor plates. Pacific plate is a major plate. Cocos plate and the Nazca plate are getting subducted under South American plate. And so continental continent convergence is taking place. Whenever continental continental convergence takes place, they, sorry, oceanic uh, continental convergence is taking place. Whenever oceanic continental convergence takes place, then the oceanic plate is heavier as compared to continental plate due to its higher density. Oceanic plate subducts below the continental plate, melts down, breaks down, and melts down. Molten material gets formed. That molten material tries to move upward and it finds an opening on the recently formed fold mountains on the continental plate. And we get a chain of volcanic mountains over here. So Mount Aconcagua over here, Ojos del Salado over here, Cotopaxi, Chimborazo, they are all examples of the same. This entire range right from Rockies up to Andes is the result of oceanic continental convergence. Oceanic plate is Pacific plate. Here the oceanic plate are Cocos plate and the Nazca plate, which are subducting below the American plates. So subduction is taking place. When we look at a side of Asia Pacific, then again, the subduction is taking place between the Eurasian plate and the Pacific plate. And again, the Pacific plate is getting consumed, is getting, getting subducted below this uh, continental plate. The oceanic part of this Eurasian plate, the oceanic part of this Eurasian plate is getting subducted, sorry, is witnessing the subduction of the Pacific plate. And so the Pacific plate is getting subducted. But here it is oceanic, oceanic convergence. When oceanic, oceanic convergence take place, we get the formation of island arcs, we get the formation of trenches, we get the formation of undersea volcanoes or exposed volcanoes. And so number of island and trenches are present over here, starting from the north, Kuril Island and Trench, Japan Island and Trench, Philippines Island and Trench, Mariana Island and Trench, Aleutian Island and Trench, all these island and trenches get formed in this particular region as a result of oceanic, oceanic convergence. And this entire region, which witnesses the convergence, is almost in the form of a semicircular ring and slightly more than semicircular ring. And so it is called as Pacific Ring of Fire. The importance of Tonga volcanic eruption is that it lies on Pacific Ring of Fire. However, such a massive volcanic eruption cannot take place very oftenly. It cannot take place every now and then. For that, huge amount of magma, huge amount of heat energy, huge amount of stress needs to be accumulated, which cannot accumulate within a time period of six months or one year. It is just an assumption. That normally takes a larger period of time. And so we, can, uh, we cannot say that we will witness another such massive volcanic eruption in the same region in the coming years. However, it, the probability or it cannot be ignored completely. This is this particular region that is Pacific Ring of Fire. Moving on to the next question. Question number four, recently Turkey and Syria witnessed a very severe earthquake claiming heavy loss to life and property. Which of the following water bodies separates Turkey from Europe? I told you this last one and a half year has been the year of disasters. Be it the disasters due to plate tectonics, be it disasters related to mass wasting, be it any type of disaster. This region, last one year has been the year of disasters. Turkey and Syria witnessed a massive earthquake in this, in the, uh, this particular time period and heavy loss to life and property took place. One of the technology that is finder technology was applied by NASA. In fact, NASA sent that technology to, uh, to Turkey to find the breathers or the alive people who are buried under the debris. How to search them, how to search them, how to locate them. This particular finder technology work on the principle of detection of heartbeat and the detection of breathing. It detects carbon dioxide. So if any breathing activity is going on below the debris, if any heartbeat is active below the debris, up till the depth of 30 feet. If the debris is more than 30 feet, then even this technology fails up. But up till the depth of 30 feet, this technology helps to sight the people if they are alive and they are buried. So rescue operation, excavation work can be carried out. 
However, Turkey and Syria, Turkey is itself having a plate that is called as Anatolia plate. South of Turkey plate, it is African plate. On the eastern side of the Turkey plate, there is yeah, Arabian plate. On the northern side of Turkey, it's Eurasian plate. So it is a junction of four plate boundaries. Turkey plate, that is Anatolian plate, African plate, Arabian plate, and Eurasian plate. Generally, the plate boundaries are more susceptible. They are more prone to earthquakes or tectonic events. And so it happened in this particular region, that is Turkey. And a magnitude uh, Richter scale recorded the reading as more than six, more than seven on the Richter scale. Number of tremors one after another were had already affected this particular region. Heavy loss to life and property, which of the following water body separates Turkey from Europe? Now, what UPSC will do? Turkey is in the limelight. Syria is in the limelight. Israel, West Asia remains in the limelight. So UPSC will may or may not directly frame a question on this particular topic of earthquake. There is a probability, there is a chance that you will get a question directly or indirectly on earthquake. But apart from that, this particular region of Turkey and Syria is at the center of discussion. And so a location-based question is having probability for being asked in coming examination. Which of the water body separates Turkey from Europe? Question is asking, Turkey is separated from Europe. Turkey is not connected as a continuous landmass into Europe. Rather, water is present in between them. So which of the water bodies? State of Kerch, State of Bonifacio, State of Dardanelles, and the Rome Sea. So which of these water bodies connect Turkey to Europe or separate Turkey from Europe? State of Kerch. State of Kerch has also been in limelight. State of Kerch is located in Black Sea. It connects Sea of Azov with Black Sea. Close to Crimea Peninsula, the section of Crimea Peninsula is land is uh, providing a landlocked type of feature for Sea of Azov. But a narrow opening is connecting Sea of Azov to Black Sea, and that is State of Kerch. Second is the State of Bonifacio. The state of Bonifacio is present on the southern side of Italy, southern side of France. There are two island groups over there. One is Sardinia, one is Corsica. One belongs to Italy, other belongs to France. In between them, there is a water body that is state of Bonifacio. So state of Bonifacio is a water body that separates France from Italy. Not the mainland of France from Italy, because mainland of France and Italy both are on a continuous landmass of Europe. However, there are two islands. One belongs to France, other belongs to Italy, and they are separated by state of Bonifacio. State of Dardanelles is the water body that separates this particular region, Turkey, from Europe. How? Black Sea is connected via Strait of Bosporus to Marmara Sea. Marmara Sea is connected to Mediterranean by, by this particular water body, State of Dardanelles. And the last is Rome Sea. Rome Sea is located on the southern side of Turkey. On the southern side of Turkey, there is a small island that is called as Cyprus. In between Cyprus and Turkey, the water body, which is specifically a part of Mediterranean Sea, but yet that specific region is known as Rome Sea. Have a look at the map over here. This is the map of Black Sea, right? So Black Sea present over here. This is the state of Kerch. Have a look. This is Sea of Azov. This is our country, Ukraine, not our country. Zelensky country, Ukraine over here. This is Sea of Azov present over here. This is the water body that is Black Sea. Black Sea is connected to Sea of Azov by this narrow stretch of water. Whenever a stretch of water is very narrow, it may be called as a state or channel or passage. Here we are having a state that is state of Kerch. State of Kerch over here. Another option, the answer to this particular question was state of Dardanelles. So what is the location of a state of Dardanelles? This particular region. Here you are having the city of Istanbul. Istanbul is separated from the mainland of Turkey by another water body that is Strait of Bosphorus. This water body in center part here, this is called as Sea of Marmara. This is Sea of Marmara. Black Sea is connected to Sea of Marmara via Strait of Bosphorus. On Strait of Bosphorus, on the side of Europe, but a part of Turkey, it is Istanbul. Between Turkey and its own country, Turkey only, that is a part of Europe, here the water body is state of Dardanelles. State of Dardanelles, Mediterranean, state of Dardanelles, Sea of Marmara, state of Bosporus, Black Sea, followed by state of Kerch and Sea of Azov. 
getting my point clear so these are the water bodies which are present in this particular location why this region is so very important as far as upsc exam is concerned this year ukraine russia conflict going on russia occupied maximum parts of ukraine donetsk over here kharkiv over here mariupol zaporizhia you all must have been reading these points kherson over here city of odesha over here crimea was already annexed by russia way back in 2013 and 14 right so this entire area of euro of ukraine from eastern side and maximum part of southern side was occupied by russia during this crisis and ukraine is one of the major regions for production of wheat for production of edible oils and a huge population of the world many countries of the world were dependent on the imports from ukraine when this conflict started last year 2022 in february then after that when the season of wheat export started three or four months later then the supplies were disrupted people were not able to fetch the food grains which are required in order to save the humanity in order to save the livelihood of uh, in order to save the dietary needs of a huge chunk of population various section of <clears throat> the world finally the secretary general of uno antonio gutris intervened he went to ukraine and talked to russia mediated that few countries were having the observer status in that and the pathway was open which pathway was open export of wheat via sea route so sea of azov was chosen for that <laughs> close to odisha here there is a small island called as snake island that was also chosen for that state of kerch black sea where how will the ship move via state of bosporus sea of marmara state of dardanelles to african countries to asian countries so this was the only sea route that was available so it was at the center it was at a limelight and so this question becomes important this region is very very important for your upsc examination be it prelims be it mains or your personality test your or your interview you will get one or the other question in any of the three modules come what may without criss crossing this region you won't be able to qualify you won't be able to become an ias officer that's a challenge <clears throat> now what do we mean or what is the relevance of earthquake because earthquake if you look at north india the region of ncr himalayan belt nepal parts of uttarakhand they are prone to earthquake after 2015 onwards when the first prominent tremor was experienced in northern and the gangetic plains of north india since then now earthquake is becoming more common more frequent so and even in this year in 2023 also in 2022 also tremors were experienced were uh, witnessed in various parts of north india even the northern plains of india so earthquake is very important when we talk about earthquake there are few specific terms that must be clear in your brain what is a focus and a hypocenter focus and hypocenter is a part in litho is a point in lithosphere from where the earthquake initiates so at the focus or hypocenter center the earthquake initiates the focus or hypocenter is always below the surface of earth so if this round <coughs> figure is representing the surface of earth then focus will always be below the surface so somewhere over here below the surface somewhere over here this particular region represents the focus focus is also known as hypocenter from focus the earthquake waves initiate and they radiate they move out in all direction they move towards the surface in all the direction the point which is vertically above the focus is the first point to receive the earthquake wave and that particular point is called as epicenter so the point which is vertically above the hypocenter above focus on the surface of earth or the point which is closest to the focus or epi or hypocenter and is on the surface of earth that point for the first time or firstly receives the earthquake wave and that point is called as epicenter from epicenter the waves move out in all directions and so the damage is recorded maximum on this epicenter and as you move away from epicenter be it on any side the intensity of the earthquake reduces the amount of energy released by the earthquake is called as magnitude of the earth amount of energy release is called as magnitude the amount of damage caused by the earthquake is called as intensity of the earthquake
that is called as intensity of the earthquake magnitude is measured by richter scale richter scale is having a scale 0 to 10 but it is an open ended scale intensity is measured by modified mercalli scale having a scale 12 but it is a closed ended scale so richter scale is open ended modified mercalli scale is closed ended having value 1 to 12 having value 0 to 10 see scale having the value 0 to 10 and a turkey syria earthquake was somewhere between 7 and 8 one value was 7.8 on the richter other value was 7.4 on the richter such a high magnitude earthquake was seen was witnessed by this particular region that is turkey and syria however in this manner the earthquake waves move away from the epicenter but there is a difference in the type of earthquake waves the earthquake waves which are generated from the focus or the hypocenter they are called as p waves or s waves p waves are primary waves s waves are secondary waves the propagation of the p wave is longitudinal the propagation of the s wave is transverse so what happens exactly when the p wave is propagating it will move in this manner suppose this is the center of the earth and the wave is moving towards the surface it will move the particle movement will be in this manner so when it hits the surface it will cause the surface to move up and down up and down there will be no practically there will be no damage by this wave that is called as p wave or the primary wave the second set of wave is called a secondary wave or a transverse wave when the s wave is moving in this direction it will the particle movement will be like this like sound wave it will be moving in this manner so when it will hit the surface it will move in this manner as a result it will result in a shaking impact a shaking impact will take place but still damage will not be there the after effect of primary wave and secondary wave is generation of r wave in the lower crust r wave is generated in lower crust and l wave that is generated in upper crust r wave stands for relay wave l wave stands for long uh, long wave or it stands for love wave as well so upper crust is having long wave lower crust is having relay wave these r wave and l wave are dangerous how they are dangerous suppose this is the surface of earth if it is impacted by r wave and l wave then the wave pattern develops on the surface crests and troughs gets formed over here so any structure that would have been present over here will now reach here and so it will fall down so they, these waves results in destruction these waves are r wave and l wave and the main waves which are generated from the focus of the hypocenter they are primary wave and secondary waves primary wave and secondary wave move in the body of the earth and so they are called as body waves r and l wave are found on the surface of the earth that is in the crust of the earth so these two set of waves are called as surface waves so the surface waves and the body waves they are having different impact they are having different they are studied on different parameters right again looking back at this particular figure see here uh, the waves are moving in different direction here if you can demarcate the difference in the color i don't know whether you are able to demarcate or not but still i will try to increase the size so that you are able to see that there are two colors of the waves which are used over here one is somewhat magenta or a purple color and the other is dark green or the bottle green color right so look at these two colors if you will look at these two colors you will find that the purple or the magenta color is depicting the p wave that is the primary wave and the green color is depicting the s wave so green color is depicting the s wave how do you know that because s wave cannot travel in liquid medium as soon as s wave enters the liquid medium it disappears and the outer core see it is written, written over here liquid outer core outer core is in liquid form so all the green arrows which are reaching the outer core over here they are not moving forward these green arrows are taking a halt over here they cannot cross the liquid material but the section of the s wave which is moving in this manner the green arrow that is going over here the green arrow that is going over here which i am making red these green lines are representing s waves which are not encountering any liquid medium and so they are able to reach the surface in different mechanism 
So a particular region over here from here to here, you will not be having a single arrow showing S wave. And so this region right from this place to this place, which is marked by 105 degree to 105 degree, NCRT book says 104 to 104. Some of the book by physical geography by Savinder Singh say will say 103 to 103. That will not make any difference. The point that you need to understand is that right from this area to this area, you get the shadow zone of S wave. So no wave is detected, no secondary wave is detected in this particular region, and this is and this is called as shadow zone of S wave. In the same manner, <clears throat> look at a pink arrows. The pink arrows are depicting P wave or the primary wave. They can inter, uh, travel in solid, liquid, and gas. However, when they change the type of material, the density changes. And so the concept of bending towards the no normal, moving away from the normal, the concept of refraction, which you all must have studied in your low classes, applies over there. And so we get multiple bending refractions and reflections of primary wave. As a result, a particular area is seen for a particular position of focus where P wave cannot be detected. So in this particular region, P wave is not there. In this particular region, P wave is not there. Here it is there. It is present in all the locations. It is present here also. This area marks the shadow zone of P wave and this area marks the shadow zone of P wave. So shadow zone of P wave is comparatively smaller as compared to the shadow zone of S, right? These are the important points about <coughs> the exact mechanism, the exact genesis of earthquake. In the same manner, question may, be, may come up in your prelims examination about a fault. Generally, earthquakes are most frequent. They are mostly present in a region that is called as a fault. Now, what is the definition of fault? What is the definition of fault? When any of the tectonic activity take place, plates are moving against each other, plates are moving towards each other, they are moving away from each other by any of the mechanism. If a crack develops on the plate, suppose this is a plate and a crack develops. As soon as the crack develops, it is called as a crack. But when the displacement along the crack take place, that is called as a fault. A crack is a simple thing. If the displacement take place, it is called as a fault. Once the fault gets formed along fault, movement of one of the other block is more frequent as compared to any other region. And so generally the regions of fault are more prone to earthquake. So the fault lines are more prone to earthquake. Between Greater Himalaya and Middle Himalaya, him Middle Himalaya, there is a fault line called as main central trust. Between Middle Himalaya and Shivalik, there is main boundary trust. Between Shivalik and the western section of Northern Plains, it is Himalayan frontal fault. Between Shivalik and the eastern section of Northern Plains, there is boundary fault. Between Aravalis and Northern Plains, it is great boundary fault. So these entire this entire region is having number of fault lines. So if fault lines are there, then occurrence of earthquake will be frequent. Same is true for the western coast of North America. All along the region of California, Las Vegas, Los Angeles, San Diego, San Francisco, that entire region experiences frequent earthquake. Then again, in that last map which we were uh, watching for, Pacific Ring of Fire, the Japan region, the islands of the Pacific, they are prone to earthquake. The frequency of earthquake is more than one or two earthquake per day. That is the frequency of earthquake. They are prone to earthquake. Why? Because they are at tectonic plate boundary. So any region that is at the plate boundary is more prone to earthquake. Have a look at this particular map. This is a global seismographic map for the boundary of tectonic plates. Here you are having a plate that is called a North American plate. Here you are having Nazca plate and a Cocos plate. Here a small plate, Caribbean plate, South American plate, African plate, then Eurasian plate, Indo-Australian plate, here a Philippines plate, then the this part of the world continues. And here the most important part that you need to notice in this particular map is the presence of This plate mark. This is called as Great African Rift Valley. 
here tectonic activity is taking place nile valley is a uh, nile river is flowing through that rift valley and it is known as great african rift valley if whatever that we know up till now if the same rate continues then the eastern part of the africa will get separated from the remaining part of africa continent that is great african rift valley so tectonic plates will become very much important for your entire preparation for upsc this year Moving to question number five, recently Joshimut witnessed a drastic land subsidence resulting in cracks on the urban infrastructure. Joshimut is located on which among the following? Joshimut subsidence very much in limelight. It had been in news for last so many months. Joshimut witnessed a land subsidence event. Land went down. It subsided down. It subsided down. What happened? The roads, the buildings, the houses, the settlement that was present on the Joshimut that it started witnessing cracks. And so the entire urban life of this particular region, that is Joshimut, not only the urban life, even the rural life of that particular region got disturbed, got shattered. And Joshimut is located at a center point from where we get the road connectivity to many important places. First, Badrinath, a Hindu pilgrimage site, Hemkund Sahib, Sahib, the pilgrimage site for the Sikhs, Valley of Flowers, one of the uh, very prominent. <clears throat> national parks that is present over in that particular location and then joshi mart is the connecting link for the oli that is one of the prominent skiing grounds known for uh, snow exports in entire asia continent so it is known for hindu tourism it is known for sikh tourism it is known for adventure tourism it is known for leisure tourism that is joshi mart and that particular region has witnessed this so joshi mart is located on which among the following Middle Himalayas and Kumau, Greater Himalayas and Kumau, Middle Himalaya and Gadwal, Greater Himalaya and Gadwal. So the option says that it is either on Middle Himalaya and Gadwal and has to be combined with Kumau or Gadwal. So whether it is a part of Middle Himalaya or Greater Himalaya and whether it is a part of Kumau or Gadwal, Uttarakhand is divided into two sections. The eastern section is called as Kumau. Almora, Rani Khet, Nainital, Haldwani, Kadhgudam, they are part of Kumau Himalayas. When we talk about Gadwal, Badrinath, Kedarnath, Gangotri, Yamnotri, Dehradun, the capital of Uttarakhand, Rishikesh, Haridwar, Srinagar of Uttarakhand, not Srinagar of Kashmir, Srinagar of Uttarakhand, <coughs> they are part of Gadwal. Joshimant is very close to Badrinath, it is a part of Gadwal. So the first option A and B can be eliminated very easily. Next is C and D, whether it's a part of Middle Himalaya or a Greater Himalaya. So undoubtedly, it is a part of Greater Himalaya. Look at this particular region of Joshimut. This is the location. This is a detailed map of Josh Joshimut. Here you are having this particular river that is called as Alaknanda. Mark this river over here, Alaknanda River. Alaknanda River originates from ahead of Badrinath and it flows down up till Dev Prayag, having Panch Prayags. Vishnu Prayag, present over here. At Vishnu Prayag River, Dholi Ganga joins Alaknanda. Then at Nand Prayag, Nandakani joins. Then at Karn Prayag River, Pindari joins. Then at Rudra Prayag River, Mandakani joins. And finally at Dev Prayag, Bhagirathi, the river that originates from Gangotri, Gomuk, that joins Alaknanda at Dev Prayag, from where geographically we get the name of river Ganga. As per Hindu mythology, Ganga originates from Gangotri, Gomuk. As per geography, as per NCRT books, Ganga is the name that is given to the combined flow of Bhagirathi and Alaknanda. Dev Prayag onwards or Dev Prayag downwards in Ganga Valley region. So River Alaknanda, Joshimut is located on the banks of River Alaknanda. There were multiple reasons given for the subsidence of Joshimut. One of the reasons was excessive withdrawal of water from underground aquifers. There was a tunnel boring machine that was working over there in 2009 that punctured an uh, underground aquifer which was not known to the people who were engaged in the construction of the tunnel and water started moving out. And since then, up till now, water is continuously moving out. However, the rate of <coughs> extraction, rate of uh, water, rate at which the water is coming out has slowed down, but still water is coming out. That is considered as one of the reasons. The second reason, it is again located at the tectonic plate margin. I told you about the fault lines in my lecture. So it is located on the tectonically active region and so it is impacted by land subsidence. Other reason is given that overpopulation, 
presence of population, presence of crowd beyond the carrying capacity of that particular region, beyond the ecological capacity of that particular region has resulted in detrimental impact on this particular area that is Joshimat. Oli, important place over here. <coughs> Gonk, Laga Selang, again important place over here. The road goes to Badrina Temple and from between Joshimat and Badrina, there is a place from where the tracking route starts for Hemkun Sahib and Valley of so a very important region that we discuss over here. Look at this particular map. If you will look at this particular map, I have given this map, added this map in my discussion, just to tell you the location of Joshimat. Somewhere over here, at the northernmost stretches of Uttarakhand, we are having the location of Joshimat that is present here. Moving on to next question, question number six. Recently, an avalanche hit the Nathula region, killing many tourists and burying the vehicles under snow. Which region are connect, regions are connected by Nathula? The question is very simple. Again, the purpose of the question is to bring your, to show you the importance of any particular event that took place in recent days. This news is not even, I think it is the news of within, within a week or at the most within 10 days. Nathula region, few cars were moving. <clears throat> they were moving to a specific spot to visit Nathula. And avalanche started. Avalanche is the, eye, the river of snow that starts moving all, all of a sudden. That is a part of mass wasting only. Moves under the impact of gravitational force, moves under gravity, and it buried all the vehicles. Many people were killed in that. Vehicles were buried over there. And this event took place. Number of avalanches have taken place in this particular winter season only. This was the latest one. So I took the example. Now the question is asking about Nathula. Now what is the relevance of Nathula becomes your subject matter. What is the importance of Nathula becomes your subject matter. Why Nathula is important? Nathula is very close to Doklam. Doklam is close to the Chumbi Valley region. There was a standoff between India and China a few years back in the last decade, right? That was Doklam crisis. Nathula is close to that particular region. Recently, <coughs> Bhutan and India, are negotiating about the boundary regions. The king of Bhutan visited our country. He said that he is about to negotiate a border region with China, which is a cause of concern for our country, India. Now, Bhutan has been an ally of our country, India. All the roads of Bhutan are made by BRO Border Road Organization. Delhi University is having a campus at Thimpu, the capital of Bhutan. All the degrees which are higher degrees, which are available to the residents of Bhutan are from Delhi University. They are having this written as University of Delhi, right? So that is the importance of that particular region. Very close to that region, we are having the state of Sikkim. In the state of Sikkim, there is the location of Nathula. So Nathula is present over there. Another mountain pass is Zelepla. Nathula was a mountain pass that is being used for the private tours towards uh, for Kailash Mansarovar pilgrimage. So Nathula is having its own importance. The answer is very much clear. It is Sikkim and Tibet. Arunachal and Tibet, it is having Bamla, it is having <coughs> Anjo Pass, it is having Kibithu Pass, it is having Dipu Pass at Arunachal, Myanmar and China Tri-Junction. So number of mountain passes in Arunachal Pradesh, Ladakh and Tibet, number of mountain passes are there, Shiptila are there, <coughs> Jozila, Khadungla, Baralachala, Umlungla, Langlangla, Langlachala. All these passes in Ladakh region. Himachal Pradesh is having a specific pass that is Shiptila from where River Satlaj enters India. So the answer to this particular question is Sikkim and Tibet. Have a look at the map of this particular region. Dokala. This is the region that I was discussing that is Doklam. And very close to this Doklam, here this particular region, it is the Doklam Plateau and it is the region of Chumbi Valley. And see the location of Nathula. See the geostrategic importance of this particular region. Nathula. And here we are having this Siniguri corridor that is called as the chicken snake. China plans to detach this so as to cut off the entire northeast. Why this region is again important? Just within a fortnight, there was an issue between India and China. China has given, renamed almost 11 districts of Arunachal, claiming the entire Arunachal as its own. Recently, the visit by our home minister to a border area of Arunachal was also criticized by the Chinese foreign ministry to which India has objected. 
right? Arunachal Pradesh is a part and parcel of the country of India, Union of India, and that cannot be segregated or demarcated as against or considered as a disputed land, right? So this region is important. Very close to this region, you have Nathula, Zilepla, mountain passes over here. Here, the second highest mountain peak of India, Kanchenjunga, is located over here. Kanchenjunga is the second highest peak of India. Kanchenjunga is the highest peak of Himalayas in India. Kanchenjunga is the third highest peak of the world. Kanchenjunga is the second highest peak of Himalayas in the world. All these statements, you need to monitor them. All these statements are absolutely correct, right? So this particular region. Moving on to next question, question number seven. British era suspension bridge at Morbi in Gujarat collapsed last year, killing hundreds of people. This bridge was built across which river? Again, how to take out the current affairs from newspaper? What should be the methodology? What should be the technique which we must adopt in order to materialize, in order to crystallize the paper of UPSC? Something happens. It may or may not be a subject matter for your UPSC. A simple event that took place. And due to that event, it will become a part and parcel of UPSC. But UPSC will not ask about a tragedy. UPSC will not ask about a mishappening. It may at the most mention that particular region. I mentioned that particular statement so as to make the question absolutely clear. Now, Morbi incident was something very big incident. Number of people were present on that particular bridge and the bridge collapsed, killing hundreds of people over there. Now the question is being asked on which particular river was this bridge present? or it was present across, it was built across which river? It was a British era suspension bridge. Bhada River, Machu River, Shitrunji River, and Meswa River. All the four rivers are minor rivers, very small rivers of this particular region, that is Gujarat. Now the question ask, is asked, on which particular river this Morbi incident took place? And the answer is Machu River. Option B, B for Boy. Machu River is the right answer to this particular question. Have a look at this particular region of Gujarat. If you look at this particular region of Gujarat, you will find that Gujarat is having a very long coastline. This is Gulf of Kutch. This is Gulf of Khambat, right? A very long coastline. Almost 44 domestic ports are present on the coastal area of Gujarat. No other state is having such a long coastline. Why? Because of this Gulf of Kutch and Gulf of Khambat. There are three prominent coastal names for the Gujarat coastline. This is called as the Kutch coast. This is called as Kathiawar coast. And this section of Gujarat is called as the Sarashtra coast. So this particular region of Gujarat, very close to this Kutch region, this is the location of this particular, uh, this particular area that is called as Morbi, where this incident took place. This importance of this river Machu is for this uh, run of Kutch region. It moved towards the run of Kutch region. This entire region is having a scarcity of water. Excessive rainfall cannot take place, even sufficient rainfall cannot take place by the monsoon winds. Only in case of critical geographical feature like a cyclone may hit this particular region and that too, when it is moving under the influence of the low pressure created over the region of Thar Desert to the Kutch region, only then it can happen. So this region is having its own relevant, own relevance. Getting my point clear? Question number eight. Inland waterways are a panacea for the growth and development. Following that connotation, world's longest river cruise was inaugurated by a PM from which place and on which river? Don't go by the complexity of the question. The question is very simple. But the method or the point that is important over here. MV Ganga Vilas was the name of the cruise that started from Varanasi on this particular river, Ganga. Ganga originates, is having its name Ganga from Depriya by the confluence of Alaknanda and Bhagirathi, which I told you. It moves down up till the uh, town of Farakka. From Farakka, it bifurcates into two branches. The main branch enters Bangladesh and the southern tributary moves along Kolkata. And uh, the main branch of Ganga joins Brahmaputra and then they forms a common delta along with Hugli that is known as Sundarban Delta, marking the largest delta of the world. It was inaugurated by Prime Minister. It is started from Varanasi and it is from Varanasi to, to Dibrugad in Assam. From Varanasi to Dibrugad in Assam, it will become the longest river cruise in the world and 
it is not only the longest for india it is also an international river cruise it is not only it is not only criss crossing the region of india have a look at a map of this particular cruise starting from varanasi from varanasi very close to that region where river gomti joins river ganga it will move along with the ganga along with hugli reach kolkata enter bangladesh from bangladesh it will move northward against the headwaters of brahmaputra enter through brahmaputra and reach the region of dubrigar this is the longest cruise that has been initiated it has already been initiated by our prime minister in this particular region now the question may be asked this is the longest cruise route this is the longest river cruise that is available in the entire world later on any other country launches it will be something different but right now all the tributaries of ganga that are joining after varanasi i repeat all the tributaries of ganga which are joining after varanasi so gomti ghagra gandak kosi if i want to draw that gomti very close to varanasi ghagra gandak kosi gomti ghagra gandak kosi these will be left bank tributaries of <coughs> ganga then the right bank tributary the major tributary will be river son son will be having a tributary that is called as rihan so what are the tributaries of ganga after varanasi will become important here the ganga distributes in this manner a main branch of the ganga goes into bangladesh hugli moves towards kolkata in hugli again we are having two uh, rivers major rivers ajay and river damodar which joins river hugli so all these will become important as far as your upsc preparation is concerned the head waters of ganga the entire river map of ganga will be important equally the river brahmaputra will become very important it is the only river of the world brahmaputra to cross three countries with seven different names sangpo dehang siang brahmaputra jamuna padma meghna all these are the names of the single river that is brahmaputra in india it is known as brahmaputra maximum stretch of india from sadia to dhubri that is known as brahmaputra that is known as national waterways number 2 another question that will become a part and parcel of upsc that how many national waterways are included in the longest river cruise so alabad to haldia will include varanasi to kolkata right so national waterway number 1 national waterway number 2 and if any other minor waterway is there will become a part and parcel of this particular question what as far as your mains is concerned what is the negative impact of river cruise it will destroy the marine ecology it will destroy the marine biodiversity there is a dolphin that is found in ganga river system that is called as susu dolphin this susu dolphin is already reducing in number it is drastically reducing in number with the movement of this river cruise more pollution will take place oil pollution will take place when the humans will interfere the natural ecosystem some disturbance is bound to take place and it will further deteriorate or depreciate the quantity and the number of this particular variety of dolphin right so it becomes important question number 9 the border road organization under its projects himang has constructed a world's highest motorable pass in the ladakh region of jammu and kashmir at a height of over 19300 feet it is named as now the highest motorable road has been made by bro border road organization again something of recent origin potula located in ladakh khadungla located in ladakh changlangla located in ladakh and umlingla also located in ladakh all these all these four la or the mountain passes which are given over here all are located in ladakh however the answer to this particular question is your fourth option that is omling la before the inauguration of this road khadung la was known for having highest motorable road but now omling la at this particular height is known to have highest motorable road in the world not only in india it is the world's highest motorable pass up till now in the time to come a new road may be constructed a new pass may be inaugurated and it will be something different but now umling la is known for having highest this trait of having highest motorable road see the location of umling la and see the geopolitical importance of this particular location umling la this is the location of umling la this particular area is umling la 
and here we are having the border of India with China. Very close to the India-China border, very close to Sino-India border, Umlingla. And that particular region is now having the highest motor rail load. So the movement of uh, military vehicles, movement of army vehicles, movement of army personnel, movement of any type of help, cargo, anything can be carried out easily. That is the important, that is the relevance of this particular road, that is Umlingla. Leh, located over here. Manali, located over here. The entire border area of India with China, that is LSE line of actual control, is very, very important, very, very relevant to, uh, for your UPSC exam. This region has again been in the center of debate in last two to three years. Right from pandemic up till now, this region has seen some of the other disturbance, be it Galwan Valley disturbance, be it Petrol Point 14, be it uh, Pangong So Lake, be it any particular region. So this region will be very, very important. That is Umlingla. The world's highest motorable road. Question number 10. Arrange the following geostrategic locations of Ladakh region along, along the line of actual control from north to south. So, few places are given. They are again having the importance. Every place you must have heard in the newspaper if you are following the newspaper. There are some people in this world who follow newspaper very seriously and some don't. But if you have been following the newspaper, then Pangong So Lake, Petrol Point 14, Depsangla, Galwan Valley, they all have been printed in the Hindu newspaper, the Indian Express, not once or twice, but you cannot count how many times these names have come up in newspaper in last one and a one and a half year, even, even before that. So you need to arrange these locations from north to south. Pangong So Lake, Petrol Point, 14, Depsangla, Galwan Valley. The northernmost among this is Depsangla, followed by Petrol Point 14, followed by Pangong So Lake, no, followed by Galwan Valley, and the last will be Pangong So Lake. So Depsang Plain, Petrol Point 14, Galwan Valley, and Pangong So Lake. How to remember that? Any north to south, east to west, west to east, south to north can only be remembered by looking at the map. If you are not looking at the map, you cannot remember that. Come what to me. So focus on this particular map. This is a map along the LOC. This is Depsangla. The Depsangla is written over here. May I increase the size of them? This location is Depsangla, Depsang Plain. Petrol point 14, marked with the yellow dot over here. It is followed by Galwan Valley, which is further followed by Pangso Lake, which is further followed by Shiokri. So north to south, Depsangla, Petrol Point 14, Galwan Valley, Pangongso Lake. Depsang, Petrol Point 14, Galwan, Pangongso Lake. <coughs> Karakuram Pass over here, another important point. Rechinla, present over here, another important point. Ramchok, present over here, another important point. All these locations need to be remembered. This particular region, see over here. Seram Sheher, the location of Siachen Glacier. Saksagam Valley, Saksagam Valley was that region that was ceded by Pakistan to China as a part of Belt and Road Initiative, right? <clears throat> that was that particular region. This is Gilgit region, Pakistan occupied Kashmir region, right? The region of Jammu and Kashmir. See the location of Jozila over here. See the location of Kargil over here. See the location of Leh over here. Which river is flowing through Leh? Which river is flowing through Kargil? That all becomes important for this particular region, right? <coughs> Have a look at this particular site. That was line of actual control along Ladakh region. Here also we are having India-China border, that is Sino-India border, along this area that is Arunachal Pradesh. I told you Arunachal Pradesh came to limelight just now when China renamed 11 districts of Arunachal <coughs> using different names. And so it is important. Here, Kibithu is there. Here, Difu Pass is there, D-I-P-H-U. Difu Pass is a tri-junction of this is Myanmar, this is China, this is Arunachal, India. That is uh, present over here. Tawang sector is present over here. 
so all these regions are again at limelight they keep uh, keep on popping up in newspaper so you need to follow this particular region sincerely next question question number 11 rupees 72000 crore mega project for the holistic development of the great nicobar has four components an international transshipment port greenfield international airport a power plant and a new township that could constitute a special economic zone is is it what is the planned location of the transshipment port discuss above now it has been in news multiple number of times that the government of india is planning to develop this or uh, planning to carry out this new development at this particular location that is great nicobar so for this 136 square kilometer not one or two 136 square kilometer of rainforest will be cleared from this particular uh, region that is great nicobar and a transplantation will be carried out in a neighborhood of ncr that is in haryana so a rainforest will be slashed out from great nicobar and that will be planted out in haryana which is close to ncr region in the northern plains of india however for this planning for the development of this port a particular location has been selected and options are galathia bay duncan passage maya channel st george channel now if you are having a clear cut understanding about the map of andaman and nicobar it is it is a very simple question because elimination of other three options is quite very easy you may not be knowing that where this transshipment port will be. what is meant by transshipment port transshipment port basically is a port where unloading and loading of cargo will take place it is work it will it shall work as a trading port so material or goods from one particular country will arrive over here they will be unloaded and then they will be forwarded to some other country that is a trans shipment port so shipment will be transferred dungeon passage located between south andaman and little andaman maya channel it is at maya banda between north andaman and middle andaman saint george's channel it is between kachal island and nicobar so maya channel dungeon passage saint george's channel are having specific location where this trans shipment port is not to be constructed it is at galithia bay on this uh, region of nicobar there is a river that is called as galithia river where this river drains into the <coughs> indian ocean there the bay is called as galithia bay on this galithia bay this trans shipment port is going to come up and it was in news because here there are a variety of turtles which are known as leatherback turtles leatherback turtles will be impacted in in fact the entire marine biodiversity will be impacted but the leatherback turtles are giant turtle they will be impacted by this particular project that is galithia bay have a look at this particular map of great nicobar this is the map of great nicobar and you specifically if you want to locate the location of this galithia bay this particular area over here this is the location where galithia bay exists and the river galithia drains in this manner it is very close to sumatra it is separated from sumatra that is a part of indonesia by a water body which is called as 6 degree channel it is also known as great channel so it is separated from sumatra by 6 degree channel or great channel that is present over here this particular place it is very close to indra point this point is called as indra point over here indra point is the southernmost tip of india in the tsunami of 2004 it was completely washed away it has been created it has been formed it has been constructed by anthropogenic effort by manual efforts and that very close to indra point we are having galithia bay where the trans shipment port is going to come up that is the importance of this particular region that is great nicobar now if you look at this particular map pigeon island donginalla campbell bay dilianalla vijayanagar lakshminagar shastrinagar galithia bay galithia estuary indira point inhengal all these are important you need to work on each and every thing every topic but it is beyond the capacity of this 3 hour lecture for me to take each and every topic in detail right so <clears throat> do work on that have a look at this particular map of andaman and nicobar it is again having its own importance relevance andaman and nicobar is in the form of a chain of island they are in archipelago andaman is separated on the north from myanmar by a water body that is called as coco channel north andaman middle andaman south andaman the three important north andaman middle andaman and south andaman 
Middle Andaman is the largest island of India. East of Middle Andaman, we are having the barren island that is the only active volcano of India. The capital of Andaman and Nicobar is located on South Andaman that is Port Blair. Duncan Passage separates Little Andaman from South Andaman. Maya Channel separate here, it is Port written as Maya Bandar. Maya Channel separates North Andaman from Middle Andaman. So all these are important points. Mount Narkunda, Mount Barret, Bariat, Mount Hariat. Mount Saddle, these are all important peaks of this Andaman group of island. Then if you look at this particular water body, 10 degree channel, 10 degree channel is the separating link between Andaman and Nicobar. As far as latitudinal degrees are concerned, we are having few latitudinal variations like six degree channel or the great channel between, little, between Great Nicobar and Sumatra, that is India and Indonesia. 10 degree channel between Andaman and Nicobar. 9 degree channel between entire Lakshadweep from the remaining part of Lakshadweep, that is Minikoi. So between Lakshadweep and Minikoi, 9 degree channel. 8 degree channel between Minikoi and Maldives. These are important. In the same manner, if you look at this particular region of Nicobar, here you are having the water body as St. George's Channel, Sombrero Channel, and finally in the last, you are having Galithia Bay. Andaman and Nicobar are known to have first Tri Services Command. Today we are talking about CDS. Today we are having the CDS, that is Chief of Defense Staff, in which we are trying to amalgamate all the three services and have a unity of command, right? In the decade of 1980s, three decades back, in the decade of 1980s, the first Tri Service Command of India was made at Andaman and Nicobar. That is the geopolitical and the geostrategic importance of this particular region, Andaman and Nicobar, bringing India very close to Southeast Asia, very close to Singapore, Thailand, Laos, Vietnam, Cambodia, because of the presence of Andaman and Nicobar Island. These are a volcanic chain of islands formed by oceanic, oceanic convergence taking place between the Burma plate and the Indian plate, and that is the relevance of this particular region. If you look at this particular detail, detail map, you will again get a number of water bodies, which I have already discussed, 10 degree channel over here, Nicobar Islands, Duncan Passage, Little Andaman, 10 degree channel here, you are having the Nicobar group. So that can be covered. Preparing a map can only be carried out when you are going through the map. Without going through the map, you cannot learn the map. That day will never come in your life when you will say that you are prepared with the map of your own state for your country and you have to go through the world map, right? Question number 12, Ladakh is now home to India's first dark sky reserve, Henley Dark Sky Reserve. That is the Indian Institute of Astrophysics facility called Indian Astronomical Observatory, IAO, which wildlife sanctuary surrounds this observatory. I'm sure all those who are watching this video or those who will watch, they must have been aware or they must be knowing about Henley Dark Sky Reserve. There is not a single serious aspirant of UPSC. And if he is not aware, then he or she is not serious. I'm sorry to say that. But there is not even a single serious aspirant of UPSC in this month of April 2023, who is planning to appear on 28th of May 2023, who has not heard the name of Henley Dark Sky Reserve or who is unaware of the concept. So everyone knows that. Now UPSC will not ask whether it is present in Kashmir or Ladakh or Machal or Kerala. UPSC will flip the question. It will play with the question. So this particular observatory was there. Everyone has studied everything about dark sky reserve. What is dark sky reserve? What is it used? What is light pollution? Why this particular area has been chosen? How can it be connected? What is the road and the railway each and everything? Then wildlife sanctuary, national park, vegetation also becomes a part and parcel of that only. So it is surrounded by which of the wildlife sanctuary or the national park? Hemes, Chantang, Nobra, Shio, all are present in the Ladakh region. Now also that this particular region is surrounded by a national by a wildlife century that is Chantang. So option B, B for boy shall be the right answer to this particular question. Have a look at the location of Henley. This is Indian Astronomical Observatory that is Henley. This particular area has been chosen. If you specific look at the location of Henley and if you can mark that the strategic importance of this particular region. See here, we are having this line, if it is visible to you, this line is the this is the border between India and
this is the border between india and china and here we are having the location of henley so border of india and china and the location of henley see the nearness right when the same type of infrastructure project is carried out by china our papers get flooded that china is doing this this and this and that and even our country is doing that only however this is the <coughs> location where which provide this particular region again the importance very close to sino india border see the location of manali now upsc may ask a question which observatory will you reach if you cross manali and move towards the region of <coughs> india china border the another important hill station over here is mandi una over here right so all these are important regions as far as this entire section of ladakh is concerned question number 13 taiwan officially the republic of china roc is separated from people's republic of china prc by a maritime boundary line commonly known as the median line in taiwan strait it is alternatively known as there is a median line again in newspaper taiwan china problem going on recently just few days back china was conducting many exercises <laughs> when us housekeeper nancy pelosi visited taiwan after that problem is escalated problem started they we often hear in news uh, read in newspaper or hear on a news channel that the planes of china cross the median line so what is this median line the taiwan strait between india between <coughs> this is the island of taiwan this is the country china between taiwan and china the water body is called as taiwan strait or it is alternatively called as formosa strait formosa is the old name of taiwan so taiwan china in between that it is taiwan strait in between this region in between this region a line was made over here which was called as median line why it is called as median line it is equidistant from the region of taiwan and china who made it there was a air chief marshal of us air force his name was some benjamin o davis benjamin o davis was his name and he demarcated this line and usa made it a compulsion for china and the republic of china that is taiwan to mandatory mandatorily take this particular line as a line of separation of taiwan strait between the country taiwan and china this is called as median line so this median line was made by benjamin o davis of usa and hence it is called as davis line blue line has nothing to do the, with that region hindenburg line has nothing to do with that region green line has nothing to do with that particular region this median line is the line that separates taiwan from china people's republic of china from republic of china some important lines that we hear in newspaper that is the davis line davis line as we have just seen it is between china and taiwan blue line as it was there in the option it is between israel and lebanon again a very important region israel and lebanon always fighting gaza strip golan heights something or the other keeps on happening around israel so israel and lebanon are separated by blue line hindenburg line that is between poland and germany poland and germany are having this uh, line of separation hindenburg line turkey and cyprus this is important turkey has witnessed an earthquake again upsc can flip the question in this manner and a question may be asked between turkey and cyprus they are not having very good relations right so between turkey and cyprus there is a line that is called as green line mannerheim line is between russia and finland very important russia fighting ukraine because ukraine was getting close to nato finland joined nato another neighbor of russia and russia and finland they are separated by mannerheim line so you can get a question on this particular line 38 degree parallel again very important line between south korea our friend and kim jong un so between kim jong un and south korea you are having this line that is called as 38 degree parallel next so the answer to this particular question was davis line that is option a <clears throat> question number 14 recently the foreign minister of ukraine visited india very recently the lady foreign minister of ukraine visited our country india and met her counterparts 
discussing russia ukraine crisis which has now surpassed more than a year the capital of ukraine that is kiev is located on which river now <laughs> ukraine is at the center is stage of global discussion no matter you take any of the topics world over you will find one or the other location having a discussion on this particular region that is ukraine crisis no international forum no international meeting whether it is uh, hosted or headed by a friend of you uh, russia or by an enemy of russia who are at opposite ends every meeting every forum is having a discussion on russia ukraine crisis somewhere criticizing russia somewhere on a passive note somewhere on a positive note but discussion is taking place now the capital of ukraine kiev every one of us has been hearing in news since last february 2022 is located on which of the rivers dnieper dniester don danube dnieper is present in ukraine dniester is present in ukraine even don is present in ukraine the tributaries of don danube major tributaries of danube are present in ukraine so all four rivers either directly or indirectly they are present in ukraine the answer question is kiev the capital is located on which of the rivers so it is located on a particular river that is dnieper option a have a look on the map of ukraine a careful study of the map of ukraine because the topic is in limelight upsc may not ask a question on this particular topic in your prelims or in the mains examination but again a flip question will be there and in personality test you cannot skip this region now ukraine the largest this blue color central line which is moving in this manner that is called as that is the river dnieper on this river dnieper you are having the location you are having the location of this particular region that is kiev so kiev is present over here on this river dnieper apart from that various places that you have been hearing in news like <coughs> luhansk present over here lohans present over here donets present over here jaipurizia one of the nuclear power plants present over here jaipurizia present over here mariupol present over here kherson present over here then odisha present over here you need to see the location of this place this is crimea peninsula present over here kiev i already discussed as uh, in this particular location in this manner number of places chernobyl the famous nuclear plant over here chernobyl that was also taken up over by russia that is present over there so all these places will become important you may get a question to arrange these places from east to west from west to east north to south river may be asked or any other important phenomena or feature related to this particular region may be asked by you a by ups be prepared for that what are the countries bordering bordering ukraine what are the oceanic water bodies bordering ukraine they all will become a part and parcel of your upsc preparation have a look at this particular map the western sector eastern central southern 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 that has been captured by russia this is an old map the uh, situation is continuously changing day after day week after week so this is the section of ukraine that was primarily focused by russia it continued the attack even from the northern side even from the southern side so it happened all in this manner next question question number 15 rapidly melting antarctic ice is causing a drastic sorry a dramatic slow down in deep ocean currents and could have a disastrous effect on the climate a new report warns that in the light of this statement which of the following current shall be affected most now question is giving you a situation a situation that is actually taking place heavy melting of antarctic ice is taking place so when melting of ice will take place at antarctica where will the water go water will enter the oceanic area around antarctica only so which of these currents will be impacted the most oceanic current canary current gulf stream kuroshio current now just to tell you and make you one thing clear that if the antarctic ice will melt there is not even a single place which single current which will not be impacted by that but it will directly impact amos 
that is atlantic meridional overturning circulation atlantic meridional overturning circulation you can consider it as a feeder for the entire oceanic movement and it take place in the entire atlantic ocean both on the surface and at the base and it is get it will get disturbed when it will be disturbed oyashio is present in north pacific ocean kenry current is in north atlantic but it is the cold current returning from the polar area kuroshio current is again present in pacific ocean gulf stream is the current that is moving northward in north atlantic ocean along the gulf of mexico passing through florida state washing the eastern coastal area of north america taking the part of not taking becoming a part of north atlantic drift in fact is responsible for the formation of north atlantic drift which later on moves forward and divides into multiple branches one goes towards greenland called as irminger current other current goes towards norway known as norwegian warm current and a current enters the north sea that is called as renal current and a part turns south that is called as kennedy's current so gulf stream will be most impacted by this particular phenomena that is amoc by melting of this antarctic ice this will be disturbed and so it will happen right so rapidly melting antarctic ice is causing a dramatic slowdown in the deep ocean currents and could have a disastrous effect on the climate a new report warns that in the light of this statement which of the following current shall be affected most answer shall be gulf stream have a look at the map of ocean currents if you look at this particular map of ocean current then there are certain currents which are shown with the red color arrow and there are certain currents which are shown with the blue color arrow now which of the currents are considered as <coughs> blue uh, as cold and which of the currents are considered as warm that you need to understand now suppose this is the location of equator any current which is moving away from equator will be marked with a red color color that is a warm current and any current that is moving towards the equator is a cold current so any current moving towards equator will be a cold current any current moving towards equator will be a cold current and any current moving away from equator will be a warm current moving away from equator will be a warm current why this current is called as a warm current because a current which moves away from equator carries the hot water from equator towards higher latitudes i repeat the current takes the hot water from equatorial area towards higher latitudes so suppose it reaches the some part over here in the northern hemisphere it will have a warming impact it imp <coughs> changes the impact on that particular region the hot water will create a warming impact so the impact of the water on the destination will be warm and so it is called as a warm current here the current is bringing the cold polar water towards lower latitude towards so equatorial area so it is carrying cold water so when it will reach the region of africa it will be having a cooling impact so the impact on the destination will be cold and so the current is called as cold current so any current that moves away from the equator is generally called as a warm current and any current that is moving towards equator is generally called as a cold current so we get different <coughs> colors to mark any particular ocean current a red color water moving away warm current and cold current right as far as ocean currents are concerned it is very important confluence of warm and cold current result in the formation of fishing bank it becomes very important we are having four fishing bank great fishing bank along newfoundland by gulf stream and labrador current grand fishing bank in nor in the region of norway by norwegian warm current and the cold polar water of norway dogger fishing bank in the region of north sea by renal current and the cold polar waters of north sea and the nippon fishing bank or the japan fishing bank along the eastern coast of japan by the warm kuroshio current and the cold oyashio current apart from that these ocean currents modify the climatic and the weather patterns along the regions through which it move for example gulf stream washes the eastern coastal area of usa as a result the eastern coastal area of usa is primarily known for cultivation like the region of miami peninsula is known for production of sugarcane slightly north for production of tobacco for production of 
rice. Further north, it is known for production of corns, that is the hawk's land, right? <clears throat> so when the current moves from one particular region, it modifies the climatic conditions. A cold current, a cold current always results in the formation of desert. Why? Because it reduces the amount of precipitation. When the amount of precipitation reduces, so the Bengola cold current gets the formation of Namib desert. You cannot say that the entire Sahara desert is formed by Canary's current, but Canary's current do contribute or assist in the formation of desert on the northwestern side of the Africa continent. Peru current results in the formation of Atacama desert, having Arica city, the dry city of the world. Canary current over here. Here you are having California current. California cold current results in the formation of Mozabe desert, the California region. So all cold currents are associated with desert type of climatic conditions. Warm current, Gulf Stream, good precipitation. Warm current, Agulhas current, good precipitation along the eastern coastal area of Africa. Brazil current, warm current, good precipitation along the eastern coastal area of Brazil. Here you are having a uh, <coughs> Falkland current. That is a Falkland cold current. There is a, here it is Patagonia desert. So Falkland cold current, desert area over here. Here a Gulhas current, good precipitation, no desert formation, at least on the eastern side of Africa continent. If you look at Australia, the western side of Australia is washed by West Australian cold current. So all deserts are concentrated on the western side. Eastern side is having warm current. So agriculture, mountain and greenery is present on the eastern side of Australia. That is the impact of ocean currents. Apart from that, ocean current sets the water in motion. It creates, uh, it results in the phenomena of gyration. So gyration takes place, North Atlantic gyre, South Atlantic gyre, Indian Ocean gyre and so on. It helps in redistribution of heat from equator towards the pole and redistribution of low temperature from poles towards the equatorial area. And so it modifies the climatic and the weather conditions. And so it makes, helps in keeping the earth a blue and a habitable planet. Question number 16. Lake Victoria is Africa's largest lake by area, the world's largest tropical lake, and the world's second largest freshwater lake by surface area of Lake Superior of North America. Lake Superior of North America, five finger lakes, Lake Superior, Michigan, Huron, Erie, Ontario. Five lakes, out of which four lakes, lakes are makes the border of USA and Canada. Superior, Huron, Erie, and Ontario are having some part in Canada and some part in USA. Michigan is the only lake of the Five Finger Lakes, which is entirely in USA. Lake Superior is considered as the largest source of fresh water. After that, the second largest source in the world is considered as Lake Victoria. It is the largest lake by area in Africa, and it is the world's largest tropical lake. In tropical area, this is the largest lake. <clears throat> Why Victoria Lake is important? Few months back, a plane took off from Dar es Salaam of Tanzania that is known for production of cloves. And it crash landed in this particular lake that is Lake Victoria. Further, Lake Victoria is at a border of few countries. And so it makes a disputed maritime boundary, right? So it remains in limelight. So there is a question on Lake Victoria. Which country share the border with Lake Victoria? The options are Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi, Kenya, Tanzania, Mozambique, Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, Uganda, Rwanda, Tanzania. Again, if you have been through, been going, you are in the habit of going through the map, you will be able to answer that question. Otherwise, you won't be able to answer that question. Have a look at the map of Lake Victoria. Lake Victoria is present over here, right? On one side, we are having the country that is called as The country is Kenya. Here the country is Tanzania. And here the country is Uganda. So between Kenya, Tanzania and Uganda, this lake is having its existence. But, but in the same manner, like a river is having a river basin, a lake is also having a lake basin. So these countries, Rwanda and Burundi, they are not having borders with Lake Victoria, but these two countries are also considered in the basin of Lake Victoria. So remain attentive while answering UPSC paper, <coughs> whether the question is asking about the lake basin or the exact border. Here the question is on exact border. So Uganda, Kenya, and Tanzania shall be the right answer. But if the same question will be modified in terms of basin, then Rwanda and Burundi will also become a part and parcel of Lake Victoria basin. From close to Lake Victoria, we get the origin of river White Nile. 
River White Nile moves northward. It joins uh, River Blue Nile from Lake Tana, which later on joins uh, River Adbara from Adbara, which further moves north in the form of River Nile. That is the longest river of the world. And so Lake Victoria is also important in terms of River Nile. So the answer to this particular question, Lake Victoria is Africa's largest lake. Which countries share the border with Lake Victoria? It were, we have just seen it's Kenya, Tanzania, and Uganda. So option C, C for cat, shall be the right answer. Question number 17, China is continuously <coughs> expanding its defense establishments in Indian Ocean. In connection to that, match the following places with their respective countries. Now, China is having Belt and Road Initiative. China is pursuing a string of pulse, trying to encircle India from all sides, right? Out of that, number of international treaties, agreements related to ports, related to some infrastructure development, related to some defense uh, cooperation, in name of one or the other thing, China has made number of international treaties around India only. And the question is testing your knowledge on, again, an atlas, a map-based question that where are these places located? Which country is having significance for that particular region? Coco Island, Hamban Tota, Gwazar Port, Marao Island. So Coco Island, where it is there? Just now, while going through the map of Andaman and Nicobar, I told you that India is separated from Myanmar by a water body that is called as Coco Channel between Andaman and Myanmar. So Coco Island belongs to Myanmar. Hamban Tota, that you all must be knowing. Hamban Tota has been a very <coughs> important and very renowned region, which has been developed as a port by China. So Hamban Tota belongs to Sri Lanka. That is in close to southern border of India. Gwadar port, a famous port that is located in the country of Pakistan. And Mareo Island that is located in the last option that is left, that is Maldives. Mareo is basically an atoll. Atoll is what? A coral island. When corals surround the island completely, such a region is called as an atoll. So Mareo is a atoll. So Coco Island shall go with Myanmar, Amandota with Sri Lanka, Gwadar port with Pakistan, and Mareo Island with Maldives. So option shall be D, A, B, C. D, A, B, C, search in the option. D, A, B, C, option B, B for boy, shall be the right answer to this particular question. Have a look at this particular region. Where do we have all these locations? Kindly try to locate them on the map. This is the location of Coco Island. In Pakistan, this is the location of Gwadar port, that is in Pakistan. Hamban Tota, that is present over here in Sri Lanka. And the other thing was Mareo Atoll, that is in Maldives, that is located over here in the southern part, right? All around India, whatever bases of China which are being developed, either in the oceanic region or close to the land region, they are a part of a string of pearls. Do remember that. Virginia port, again, a port that has remained in limelight for last six to seven months. It is again a transshipment port, multi-purpose port. And after the Hindenburg report, when the entire empire of uh, Sri Gautama Dhani came to limelight, then this port also was there at marking the headlines and the front page and the important pages of the newspaper. A question on that. Virginia port and under construction deep water international transshipment port is located in Kerala. The statement of the question is saying that this particular port is located in Kerala. Everyone knows that it has remained in limelight. It is located in Kerala in the Thiruvananthapuram district of Kerala. The question is, what is its primary importance? What is the primary importance of Virginia port to our country, India? That has been asked in the question. And the options are nearness to east-west navigation route, nearness to NSR navigation route, presence of a natural harbor located on a creek. <coughs> nearness to east-west navigation route, nearness to NSR navigation route, presence of natural harbor located on a creek. Option B, B for boy, 
NSR navigation route has nothing to do with this particular region that is in present in Arctic region. So option B can be eliminated. Presence of natural harbor located on a three, they may or may not be important for a port because they can be even created artificial. But the most important point about the location of Vizinjam port is its nearness to the east-west navigation route. East-west navigation route is that route which connects the southern section of Southern Europe, Northern Africa, Arabian Peninsula region, South Asia, Oceania, Asia Pacific, and even some sections of North America. Have a look at this particular line. <coughs> Gulf of Suez, Suez Canal, Red Sea, State of Babel Mandap, Gulf of Aden, Arabian Sea, moving through State of Malacca, South China Sea, and reaching the region of Hong Kong. This is called as East-West Navigation Route. So this particular line is called as East-West Navigation Route. It is a very important and a prominent route that, is, that witnesses huge movement of ships and vessels across throughout the year, right? It is the busiest route because any trade of Europe with Asia Pacific, any trade of Europe with Oceania, any trade of North American countries, Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, Libya, Egypt, along with Gulf countries, along with West Bank countries, Turkey, Arabian Peninsula countries will take place through Oceania, to Oceania or Southeast Asia or Asia Pacific or some parts of Pacific through this route. Only. This is the only route. And Virginian port, see it is marked over here. It is located in this particular location. This star is marking the location of Vizinjam port and see its nearness to east-west navigation route. It is so very near to east-west navigation route that it can be used as a port of call. Port of call means during time of emergency, this particular port may be called for help in terms of fuel, in terms of water, in terms of coding, in terms of any type of need that the navigating vessel may or may not require, that is port of call. It may work as an entry port. Entry port means it may work as a port where loading and unloading of cargo will take place or redistribution of goods will take place to different parts of the world, right? After this particular region and on the Western side, it is somewhat located at the center of East West Navigation Road, not exactly, but somewhat. So it may work as an entry port. It is having strategic importance because it is close to luxury. So it is also important as far as movement of material from the mainland to the various scattered islands of luxury is concerned. It is having this type of importance. So if we go by the language of the question, then the most critical importance of this particular Virginian port is nearness to east-west navigation route that provide a specific importance, a specific guarantee to this particular region that is <coughs> Virginian port. So the answer is option A, nearness to east-west navigation route. Question number 19. South Pars, also known as North Dome, fields are known for natural gas. It is shared by which of the following countries? South Pars, also known as North Dome. If you have heard about that, South Pars and North Dome fields are known for natural gas. This is a specific region that is present in Gulf of Persia. It is having two names, South Pars and North Dome, because it belongs to two different countries. One country called, calls its own part as South Pars, other calls it as North Dome. It is shared by which of the following countries and the options are Iraq and Kuwait, Iraq and Iran, Iran and Qatar, and Saudi Arabia and Qatar. Iraq and Kuwait, Iraq and Iran, Iran and Qatar, Saudi Arabia and Qatar. Iraq and Kuwait, they are having a contiguous boundary. Iraq and Iran are also having contiguous boundary. This, this natural gas field is present in oceanic region and it is present between Iran and Qatar. Option C, that is Iran and Qatar. It is one of the largest fields of natural gas in the world. 
the south part is the part that belongs to iran and the north dome is the part that belongs to qatar if we divide this oil field into three parts then almost two third part is is under the control of qatar and one third is under the control of iran so iran having south part occupies only one third of the field and almost two third is occupied by qatar they are having their respective ownership of this particular region that is iran and qatar again the question was put over here to bring your focus to this particular region that is gulf of persia many students get remain confused because newspaper keeps on talking anything which it feels like that which countries are called as gulf country so all those countries which share their coastline with gulf of persia this region is gulf of persia this water body is gulf of persia all those countries that are having their coastline on gulf of persia are called as gulf countries so iran iraq kuwait saudi arabia uae united arab emirates a part of oman is here so oman bahrain and qatar eight countries iran iraq kuwait saudi arabia bahrain qatar uae and oman these eight countries share the border with gulf of persia and so they are called as gulf countries it remains very important why very important recently what happened this area is called as this entire area is called as middle east middle east is divided into sections gulf countries which i told you just now then arabian countries which are present on arabian peninsula then west bank countries which are having their coastline or they are having some uh, nearness to mediterranean sea so syria lebanon jordan israel and cyprus these five countries are called as west bank countries eight countries are gulf countries saudi arabia oman yemen uae and qatar they are called as arabian countries jordan syria lebanon israel and cyprus are called as west bank countries and in the north turkey is there that is called as asia minor that is anatolia now this entire region remains very important why very important this area was having the dominance of us influence us was interfering in each and every policy strategy policy of this particular region iraq war <coughs> by security council usa taking the lead role in that sanctions over iran friendly relations with saudi arabia problems with other regions except israel that remains at the center of debate after the discovery of shale gas in usa and when the dependence of usa over this particular region for its fuel needs declined then usa decreased its role in this particular region and with the decreased role of usa the role of other power started increasing in this particular region and which was very much justified by the interference of china very recently when china has mediated a deal between two rivals that is saudi arabia and iran so saudi arabia and iran mediated a deal in beijing again establishing diplomatic and friendly relationship with each other saudi arabia is also counterbalancing or reducing the escalation of tension with yemen with oman and with all the countries in the nearby region this is the change in the geopolitics of this particular region so it has remained at the center of ir that is international relations so a question a location based question may come up in your examination like iraq many years upsc has been asking giving four countries as option which of the country is not having its coastline on mediterranean and option may be jordan it may be iraq syria is having coastline lebanon is having israel is having its coastline but iraq is not having the coastline iran is having coastline on caspian sea and persian and this persian gulf so question may be asked which country of middle east is having its coastline both on caspian sea and gulf of persia the answer shall be iran so that type of question the largest uh, saline desert of the world is located in saudi arabia that is dasht e kavir sorry that is in iran dasht e kavir the largest desert in a single country is present in saudi arabia that is rabal khali iran the capital of iran that is located on mountains over there right then what is the importance of oman yemen this entire region remains at debate israel israel is having a place that is called as jerusalem it is the origin of three religions islam 
Judaism and Christianity. So remains at the center of debate in Israel. There is a place that is called as Gaza. It is called as Gaza Strip. Again, remains at the center of dispute between Israel and Palestine. In the north, Lebanon, disturbed area, Syria and Iraq, the major regions of ISIS, Turkey, Syria, disturbed by earthquake. So this area is witnessing so much in last one to two years that you cannot skip this region as far as map is concerned. The important places of Israel, Tel Aviv, Haifa, Haifa, Saida, Beirut, Gaza, everything north to south, you should remember that. Then here you are having Red Sea dividing into two branches, Gulf of Aqaba, Gulf of Suez. Gulf of Suez is connected via Suez Canal to Port Said and hence to Mediterranean. Gulf of Aqaba is having very small, small coastlines of two countries, that is Jordan and Israel. So Israel and Jordan are also having their coastline on Gulf of Aqaba, which is a part of Red Sea. So this region becomes important. So the answer was Iran and Qatar. Question number 20. From Okukaze Desert, paleontologists have unearthed the skull of an ancient ancestor of modern day whales, which once lived in a prehistoric ocean that covered part of a country which is now known as USA, Peru, Ecuador, and Colombia. If you look at the term Okukaze Desert and if you are having some importance about the culture, language, then the term itself will tell you that it is a term that has originated somewhere in South America. So USA can be ruled out, but other three countries are a part of South America, that is Peru, Ecuador, and Colombia. If you look at the map for this particular region, Okukaze Desert is present in this particular region, and it is located in this country that is called as Peru. It was there in limelight because just somewhere in last year in the start, this particular event happened an ancient ancestor of modern day whales was found over there. It was anticipated that the size of this whale would have been equivalent to a four story building, almost 12 meters, right? That would have been the size of the building. That massive <coughs> skull was discovered from this location and that is located in Peru. Peru remains at the center of discussion due to Alina, La Nina. When the warm water washes the coastal area of Peru, that is called as El Nino. When cold water or excessive cold water is present along the coast of Peru, that is called a La Nina. From last three years, we are having continuous La Nina, which is impacting Indian monsoon, which last year at the end of monsoon was named as the triple dip La Nina. So in 2020, 2021 and 2022, for three continuous years, La Nina was there and that was present along the coastal area of Peru. The Peru cold current, if you can recall the map, that is the Peru current. A reversal of Peru current after striking the North Equatorial Current, some warm water flows or washes the coast of Peru, that is Alnino, warm current. It reverses the pressure and temperature conditions along Western Pacific and Eastern Pacific and thereby completely reverses the circulation of the Walker cell, which further weakens the high pressure or the subtropical high pressure belt of Southern Hemisphere that is close to Mascarene, close to Madagascar, and thereby the monsoon winds which are moving towards India become comparatively weak and so it negatively impacts the Indian monsoon. That is the relevance of Peru. Peru itself remains under anticyclonic conditions for most part of the year as it is washed by cold waters. So due to anticyclonic conditions, it experiences drought-like climate, water is scarce over there, rainfall is less over there and water from the lower layer of uh, ocean moves up, that is termed as upwelling. Upwelling of water takes place, which brings nutrition along with that. And so the fishing industry is well developed in this particular region of Peru. This Peru region is also having nearness to Brazil. It is having nearness to this particular region of Selvas that the rainforest, which we were talking about in some of the questions. So the region remains important. In last six months, civil disputes, Many types of local bans, hartals were being carried out in this particular region, Peru, and the government of, over, uh, over there remained disturbed, right? That was there in limelight. So a question can be asked on this particular region, Peru. Next question, the Spratly Islands is often seen in news, is disputed between number of countries. Where is it located? 
Now, Spratly Islands, Paracel Islands, Scarborough Islands, all these islands which are present in some of the other part of Pacific always remains a dispute. In 99% of the cases, if not 99, at least 90% of the cases, if there is a dispute in the world, then one of the part is China, other part can be any, any other country, right? So it is disputed, disputed between number of countries. Here the country, number of countries are many. Uh, the question is asking about the location of Spratly Island, South China Sea, East China Sea, Yellow Sea and the Sea of Japan. If you look at the map of this particular region, then see here, this is the location of Spratly Island. Have a look. These are Spratly Island. So many small, 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 dotted, 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 dotted on the map. Number of islands are there in this group that is Spratly Island. Now have a look. So many islands are there. Here we are having a country that is Philippines having Luzon as one of the island, Mindanao, right? Here we are having Vietnam. Here we are having a hegemon of the region, China. Here we are having Indonesia. Here we are having Malaysia. So there are so many islands. Island close to Indonesia, claimed by Indonesia. Island close to Malaysia, claimed by Malaysia. Island close to Vietnam, claimed by Vietnam. So for China, so for Philippines. So all these countries which are present in the surrounding region are claiming one, two or a group of this particular island that is Spratly. In the same way, here we are having Paracels Island. Here we are having Scarborough Shoal. They are disputed between one time disputed China and Philippines, China and Vietnam. So this region that is Spratly. However, the question was asking about South China Sea. So this particular region, South China Sea, also remains at the center of discussion. It is very important. The rivers draining in South China Sea, River Mekong, River Hong, Mekong draining, making delta at Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam, River Hong making delta at Hanoi. Then other rivers of this particular region will be important. The location of Taiwan. Taiwan is separated from Philippines by Luzon Strait. Here, Taiwan state that we have already discussed in one of the questions, right? So this entire region will be important. East China Sea located on the northern side. Yellow China Sea is further northern side. Sea of Japan is between Japan and the mainland of Eurasia. So the answer to this particular question, the Spratly Islands is often seen in news. It disputed between number of countries. Where is it located? South China Sea, East China Sea, Yellow Sea, or the Sea of Japan? The clear cut answer to this particular question shall be option A, that is South China Sea. Question number 22, Gulf of Guinea coastal region remains in limelight due to some of the other type of disease outbreaks match the following countries with respective name of the coast. A very important question. It may be asked by UPSC or on the same concept in any of the given years. <clears throat> Nigeria, Ghana, Cote d'Ivory, Liberia. It is an Atlas based question. Nigeria, Ghana, Cote d'Ivory, Liberia, Liberia, the countries on the western side of Africa, there was a disease outbreak very recently that was in Congo, Democratic Republic of Congo, in Gabon, Equatorial Guinea, that was there in newspaper within a month only. In the month of March only, there was an outbreak of a disease. And due to which number of people were dying, the fatality rate, those who hospitalized was all more than 90%. That was happening in this particular region. Why? Because this particular region is marked by very heavy humidity, so vector-borne diseases, zoonotic diseases, viral diseases, they are having an outbreak. The question is asking you to match the coastline, the political name of the countries and the name of the coast accordingly. Nigeria, Cameroon, Nigeria, Benin and Togo, specifically Nigeria, Benin and Togo, they are commonly known as slave coast. Why? Because there was a time <coughs> This is Nigeria, Benin, and Togo. Three countries are there. These three countries, Nigeria, Benin, and Togo. <clears throat> Europeans used to take people from here as slaves, used to keep them as bonded laborers. That was <clears throat> a practice over there. And so this region came to be recognized as slave coast, right? Ghana, the Gold is found in the soil of Ghana, and so it is called as Gold Coast. Cote d'Ivory, 
this particular country is having the coastal area that is called as Ivory Coast. And Liberia and Sierra Leone, it's Sierra Leone, these two countries are together known as Grain Coast because they are known for production of food grain. Liberia, Sierra Leone, here you are having a geographical feature that is Loma Mountain. This entire region is known for production of food grain. So Nigeria will go with Slave Coast, Ghana with Gold Coast, Cote d'Ivory with Ivory Coast, and Liberia and Sierra Leone with Green Coast. So Nigeria, as I told you, it will go with Slave Coast, Ghana with Gold Coast, Cote d'Ivory with Ivory Coast, and Liberia with Green Coast. It simply means that all the four options are correctly matched. One will go with A, two with B, three with C, and four will with D. So A, B, C, D, option A, A for apple shall be the right answer to this particular question. If you look at this entire map of Africa continent, then the political map of Africa is very important. It, it is having maximum number of countries. <clears throat> it is having 55 countries in totality, 33 coastal countries, 16 landlocked countries, and six island countries. Very important region. And this area, most of these countries in this area are underdeveloped or in the stage of develop in, uh, in the stage uh, which can be categorized as developing countries. So the region is comparatively important. Question number 23, North Sea, known for Brent crude oil and fishing activity. It is said that the presence of warm water by North Atlantic drift serves the purpose. This water enters North Sea via. North Sea is known for Brent crude. North Sea is known for Brent crude. Brent crude means Brent is basically a crude oil that is taken out from this particular region of North Sea. Brent crude is considered as a benchmark for international pricing of crude oil. OPEC considers Brent crude oil as a benchmark. It is also called as London crude. But this crude oil is having more content of sulfur, almost 0.37% of sulfur. And so another crude oil that is Texas crude oil that is commonly known as WTI, West Texas Intermediate. West Texas Intermediate is having 0.24% of sulfur and that is a light crude oil. It is heavy crude oil, it is sour, that is light and sweet. Sweet crude oil, light crude oil is considered better as compared to sour and heavy crude oil. But this is considered as an international benchmark for pricing by OPEC and so it remains, it is having its own relative importance. That is Brent crude oil. It is from Brent oil field that is present in North Sea. Entire North Sea is very shallow, less in depth. So the entire North Sea is known for continental shelf. Continental shelf is the location where sedimentary rocks get formed under which the fossil material, the dead, marine life gets accumulated, gets deposited, buried under sedimentary rocks, which over the ages, over the epochs, gets transformed into fossil fuel. So continental shelf of North Sea is considered as beneficial. It is also known for fishing activity. In one of the questions I explained to you that the renal current which enters North Sea, which is a part of North Atlantic drift, it is a warm water. And North Sea itself is close to North Pole. It is having cold water. So the cold waters of North Sea and a warm water by Rennell current and the continental shelf of North Sea, all three in unison together results in the formation of a fishing bank that is called as dogger fishing bank. D-O-G-G-E-R, dog, dogger, dog, dogger fishing bank, right? This water enters into North Sea via. The question is asking, what is the region, what is the location, what is the route, what is the water body through which this warm water enters the region of North Sea? So it is asking about Davis Strait, Dover Strait, Nares Strait, Strait of Gibraltar. Have a look at the map. This is the map of North Sea. In this map of North Sea, if you say that uh, water from Atlantic Ocean or North Atlantic Drift has to enter, then Atlantic is somewhere on this side. This must be clear to everyone. I think so. 
So water is coming from that side. If water is coming from that side, it will enter North Sea either from here or from here. But if the water is entering from that side, then the water instead of entering North Sea will reach somewhere over here. So water from this particular region enters North Sea, which is called as Renal current. Right? This current which moves forward reaches the Norwegian Sea, it is called as Norwegian Warm Current. That has nothing to do with North Sea. This renal current which enters via English Channel and state of Dover, that is a Dover state which connects English Channel to North Sea, this current is responsible for this warm water, right? So having a look at a question, Davis state is present where? Davis state is a state that connects Atlantic Ocean with Labrador Sea. From Davis State, Labrador cold current moves south, which joins Gulf Stream along Newfoundland to form the fishing bank over there, right? So Davis State is present over there. That is on the southeastern, southwestern side of Greenland, northeastern side of North America, in between Greenland and Canada, from where Labrador current inter moves southward and it connects, it connects Atlantic Ocean with Labrador Sea. Dover State, we have already seen it connects English Channel to North Sea, Nares State. Nares State connects upper Labrador Sea with Arctic Ocean. It is present on the western side of Greenland. If you will look on your in your atlases, it is uh, mentioned over there, but it is not shown as a wide water body. A small line may be drawn, which is written as Nares State. Nares State, I repeat, connects Labrador Sea to Atlantic Arctic Ocean on the western side of Greenland. The state of Gibraltar. A very prominent, renowned, important water body that connects Atlantic Ocean to Mediterranean. It is located between two countries on the northern side of Gibraltar. There is a country that is called as UK. On the southern side of Gibraltar, the country is called as Spain. Not the entire territory of UK. The part of the continental landmass that is located on the northern side of Gibraltar, it technically belongs to Spain, but it is uh, currently occupied by UK. In the same manner, the southern part of the state of Gibraltar should belong to a country Morocco, but that part has been occupied by Spain. So it is uh, located between UK in the north and Spain in the south. If you will go to a detailed map of Europe or Africa, you will be able to notice that. So the answer for this particular question was option B, B for boy, that is Dover State. Other water bodies over here will become important. Kiel Canal. Kiel is a city in the country Germany. Here we are having the peninsula, which is having the country Denmark. This is called a Jutland Peninsula. So if a ship has to move from North Sea to Baltic Sea, it has to take this route. Stegagarek Strait, Kattegat Bay, and then it will reach Baltic Sea. So a canal has been built over here that is called as Kiel Canal, written over here as Kiel Canal for navigation, right? Number of ports are present over here. Bonn, Stuttgart, Cologne, Bern. They are, these are the important places in Germany, all known for iron and steel industry. In the same manner, in Netherlands, Belgium, and France, important places are there. Important peninsulas are there. These, this region is also very important. Getting my point here? India holds, question number 24. India holds the chair of Shanghai Cooperation Organization, SCO, for 2023. SCO of 2022 took place at Samarkand, Uzbekistan. Consider the following statements on Uzbekistan. SEO summit took place in the later half of, later second half. It took place in the later second half. That was at Samarkand, Uzbekistan in 2022. Consider the following statements on Uzbekistan. After that, India got the chairmanship of SEO and this year SEO summit is scheduled to be held in India. But you are supposed to consider the questions on Uzbekistan. That is just a situation and a question on Uzbekistan. It shares the border with Afghanistan. It is a landlocked country. Now, again, a map-based question. SEO summit took place in Uzbekistan. From there, India got the chair. Another important thing about this particular summit was that for Shanghai, for SEO, Varanasi was declared as the tourism and the cultural capital for the next year. 
at Samarkand, Uzbekistan, this declaration was made in which Varanasi was declared as a tourism and the cultural capital of SEO for the coming year. And so the tourism uh, meeting will be held at Varanasi only. Now Uzbekistan is in limelight. So, so question can come on Uzbekistan. So a location-based question, map-based question to which we have to restrict our today's lecture. It shares the border with Afghanistan, yes or no. It is a landlocked country, yes or no. For that, again, you have only one option to look at the map. If you are looking at a map, see here. See here. This is Uzbekistan. This pink color area over here, that is called as Uzbekistan. Is it having border with Afghanistan? Here we are having the country Afghanistan. Uzbekistan is having a clear cut border with Afghanistan over here. Let me, don't mark. See in this matter. And is Uzbekistan a landlocked country? Yes or no? So here we are having RLC. Here we are having Caspian Sea. But these both water bodies are itself landlocked. Caspian Sea is not having any outlet to any of the oceans. Caspian Sea is big in size. Number of rivers are draining river, Ural River, Volga draining in Caspian Sea. But Aral Sea, only two rivers are draining, Sirdaria and Amudaria, and they are also at the verge of extinction. In fact, Aral Sea is about to get dry. So Uzbekistan cannot be called as a, a country having coastline. So Uzbekistan is a landlocked country, absolutely correct. And Uzbekistan is having borders with Afghanistan. If you look at this particular map, <coughs> countries of Central America, Georgia, Armenia, Azerbaijan, Armenia, Azerbaijan, always fighting among each other. Georgia, Armenia, Azerbaijan, these three countries, here you are having Black Sea, have a look. Black Sea, Ukraine over here, Black Sea over here, Georgia, Armenia, Azerbaijan over here. Look, Black Sea, Georgia, Armenia, Azerbaijan, Caspian Sea. Here we are having a mountain that is called as Caucasus. On Caucasus mountain, these countries are located. On the southern slope of Caucasus, Georgia, Armenia, and Azerbaijan are located. And so these countries, these three, Georgia, Armenia, Azerbaijan, are called as Caucasus countries. Caucasus Mountains is having the Mount Elbrus that is the highest peak of Europe as well, but that is part of Europe. Georgia, Armenia, Azerbaijan between Caspian Sea and Black Sea. Then Caspian Sea is here. Then other countries of Central Asia, have a look. Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan. Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan and Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan is the largest country of Central Asia. All these countries are also equally important as important we are having Middle East, Arabian Peninsula. So Georgia, Armenia, Azerbaijan, Kyrgyz, <coughs> Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan and Kazakhstan. All these countries should be there in your mind. This is Uzbekistan. In Uzbekistan, this place is marked as Samarkand where we had SEO summit. So coming back to our question, it shares the land border with Afghanistan, yes or no? Yes, it shares a land border with Afghanistan. It is absolutely correct. It is a landlocked country. 110% it is a landlocked country, which we have seen just now on the map. So select the correct alternative. One only, two only, both one and two, neither one nor two. Answer shall be option C, C for cat, both one and two. Question number 25, this sir, you about a dispute between India and Bangladesh has always remained contentious in bilateral relations. Which states are crisscrossed by River Tistista in our country, India? Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina visited our country, India, last year only, second half of last year. Kushiara River Water Agreement was signed between India and Bangladesh. But this the river water agreement could not be signed due to n number of domestic issues on the side of our country, India, regional politics, right? Question is asking about the flow of river Tista that through which states it is flowing. But Tista always remains at the center of discussion, why? It is having its origin. Some part originates also from Kanchenjunga region, from close to <coughs> Semu Glacier, 
that is insecure region it flows close to nathula zelepla if not directly this is a tributary of tista and it enters bangladesh so it is a river that enters bangladesh in the capacity of tista only and joins brahmaputra over there tista river water dispute between india and bangladesh has already remained contentious which states are crisp crossed by river tista of options are sikkim and west bengal sikkim west bengal and assam sikkim west bengal and meghalaya none of the alternatives are correct in india it flows through only two states and these states are sikkim and west bengal and then it enters bangladesh have a look at the map here we are having this is the territory of sikkim it is followed by the territory of west bengal this is the territory of west bengal assam has nothing to do with that it will restrict here only so this the river is not entering assam it will cross sikkim enter bangladesh and they sorry cross sikkim enter west bengal and from west bengal it will enter bangladesh it is not entering any other state and so the answer to this particular question shall be option a that is sikkim and west bengal right so in sikkim and west bengal the this river flows so option a is the correct Question number twenty-six. Red Sea is one of the important navigation route connected to Gulf of Aden by Strait of Babel Mandal. Just now we were having discussing a question on the Indian port. We saw that east-west navigation route is there, which enters Red Sea through Suez Canal, enters Mediterranean, and hence forth move forward. Red Sea is one of the important navigation route. Yes, correct. Connected to Gulf of Aden by Strait of Babel Mandal, that we also be located. Which of the following countries have their coastlines on Red Sea? Israel, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, Djibouti. We have already gone through that particular map, but have a look again. Which of the countries are having their coastline on Red Sea? Israel and Jordan. both are having very small coastline on red sea if you see over here very small coastline of jordan and very small coastline of israel that is present on this particular region that is red sea in the same manner if you look we have already uh, i have already shown you that map if you will look at the map of this particular red sea you will find that saudi arabia and djibouti are also present over there Israel in Gulf of Aqaba, Jordan in Gulf of Aqaba, Saudi Arabia is having very long coastline on the northern side of uh, Red Sea, and Djibouti north and north eastern side of Red Sea. Djibouti is a country that is having its entire coastline in Red Sea only, that is present very close to the state of Babel Mandal. So all the four countries are having their coastline on Red Sea. So select the correct alternative. One and two, no. Three and four, no. Two, three, four, no. One, two, three, four. Option D, D for dog, shall be the right answer. Question number twenty-seven. G20 summit of twenty twenty-two was held at Bali, Indonesia. Yes. G20 summit, twenty summit last year, November twenty twenty-two. It was held at Bali in Indonesia. Borneo Island is located north of Bali, having Indonesia as one of the three occupant countries. north of Bol borneo sorry north of this island bali there is a big island that is called as borneo and a statement is saying it has indonesia as one of the three occupant countries borneo island is having three countries one is indonesia which are the two countries are on borneo so malaysia and brunei malaysia and philippines vietnam and brunei vietnam and philippines again if you are having a clear understanding about the map you will be able to answer this question otherwise you won't be able to answer this question this island is called as borneo island so the borneo island is present this side this island is borneo island one of the country present is indonesia one of the country present is malaysia and which the third country which is not being shown which has not been shown in this map is the country that is called as brunei 
so a very small country brunei but excessively rich because it is having oil fuel these three countries are present on this particular island that is borneo what is the relevance of presence of these islands uh, these countries on this particular island this is the largest island of this particular region here we are in south china sea always something or another keeps on happening over here here we are having java sea here this is <coughs> so uh, jakarta region that is the capital of indonesia on the island java here it is sumatra sumatra java here it is very close to semeru volcano that erupted last year that is also a prominent region of this uh, which brings this particular region at the center of discussion every time we get el nino effect when the air descends over the region of western pacific and this area of indonesia also comes under the impact of that anti cyclonic conditions and start receiving drought like conditions start experiencing drought like conditions so it results in the problem of forest fires forest fires why because if drought is there then leaves that will fell down will decompose if they will decompose then methane will be formed methane is highly inflammable and so the incidents uh, incidents of forest fire do occur that is also an impact of el nino over this particular region borneo island is present over here it is a large island it is having three countries so the answer to the question over here will be one indonesia is given in the question and what are the other two countries malaysia and brunei that is option a a for apple shall be the right answer question number 28 recently pacific island nation of vanuatu won a vote at the united nations also on the international court of justice to establish for the first time the obligations for the countries have to address the climate crisis and consequences if they don't where is the silence climate change is taking place by climate change what is happening due to global warming huge amount of solid form of ice is melting down and taking play becoming a part of liquid water where will the water go it will be added to oceans so the level of ocean is moving up so the coastal areas of each and every country mostly and the most vulnerable are the islands and that to small islands which are present in the mid oceanic region so vanuatu island is one of the island that is present in the southern part of pacific region this island was a member of the core group of islands which were demanding to set some penal action for the countries who are committing to play their role to fight climate change to fight global warming but if they are if they fail to do that there should be some compensation for other countries and so the matter has been sent to international court of justice vanuatu island was the core member who raised this issue and very recently just within a week or 10 days this matter has been adopted by united nations and has been sent to international court of justice what will happen what will not happen is something else it may fall on deaf ears but a issue has been raised and so this becomes important for your upsc preparation the question is asking the location so it is located on the northern side of australia northeast of australia between australia and new zealand on northern pacific have a look at the location of vanuatu island so vanuatu island is located not exactly on the eastern side not exactly on the northern side it is north east of this particular region that is australia so vanuatu island is located on the north eastern side of australia this is one thing have a look at the detailed map of vanuatu island these are volcanic islands some part may also be having corals volcanic islands scattered here and there a group of islands bank islands number of islands are present over there port vila is basically the capital of this particular region that is vanuatu island and it is known for something that is exclusive to this particular region the first underwater post office of the world and rather the only underwater post office of the world is located in this particular region that is vanuatu island underwater post office of the world it is located in vanuatu island that is present in this location it was a location based question the answer is not east not north rather north east of australia 
it cannot be north of australia north east of australia shall be correct between australia and new zealand it has nothing to do with new zealand australia is here new zealand is here vanuatu is here so it is not between australia and new zealand northern pacific this is southern part of pacific equator is somewhere over here if we draw equator it can be drawn some somewhere over here this is the location of equator so not no question of going to northern hemisphere so it cannot be northern pacific so answer shall be northeast of australia that is option b before boy that was question number 28 question number 29 <clears throat> the second last question of our discussion the coral triangle also known as amazon of the sea the coral triangle also known as <clears throat> amazon of the sea is a roughly triangular area in the tropical waters and known for reef building corals this is a statement which is telling you about coral triangle which of the following group of countries cannot be considered a part of coral triangle underline the word cannot which of the countries cannot be considered a part of coral triangle now what is coral triangle if you know that you will be able to answer that if you don't know that then you won't be able to answer that because coral triangle is basically a group of six countries which are known for reef building corals but australia having great barrier reef is not a part of coral triangle so those who don't know that as soon as they will spot australia they will eliminate option d that australia cannot be there great barrier reef is along australia so one among a b c has to be there because that is not having australia but coral triangle is not having australia it is having six member countries indonesia malaysia philippines timor leste solomon islands and papua new guinea so these six countries which are given over there if you have a look at this particular uh, figure that is called as coral triangle so coral triangle is having these six countries so question is which of the following group of countries cannot be considered a part of coral triangle so the right answer shall be option d d for dog australia because australia is not a part of coral triangle the coral triangle includes six countries indonesia malaysia philippines solomon islands papua new guinea and timor leste why corals are so very important corals live in symbiotic relationship with a small tiny microscopic algae that is called zooxanthellae they create or form a calcium shell taking calcium from the oceanic water provide security provide shelter to zooxanthellae in turn zooxanthellae manufactures produces food for the corals and also provide different colors to the coral so they live in symbiotic relationship right corals are very important for marine biodiversity for sustaining marine ecology they serve as a breeding ground for the fishes they serve rather they are a part of the food chain they sustain the food chain and they are very very important for the sustenance of overall food chain marine biodiversity each and every right corals are getting lost they are at loss they are getting bleached by global warming by ocean acidification dissolution of carbon dioxide into water forming weak carbonic acid which is altering the ph scale of the ocean and so the corals are getting destroyed excessive global warming increasing the temperature of tropical waters which is again harmful for the corals it is not like that in recent discoveries in the last decade it has been found that corals can be found even in cold climates earlier it was believed that corals are absolutely tropical but now it has been discovered that corals are also present in arctic earlier there was a conception that corals can exist maximum up till a depth of 77 meter on continental shelf but now even 600 meters deep corals are discovered but they are not reef building corals the reef building corals are pre- uh, practically found in tropical waters only they require a fixed amount of salinity a specific temperature range which makes them highly vulnerable any change in climatic conditions in tropical region is detrimental for the corals very recently just two or three days back there was a news in the newspaper that corals from certain regions they have uh, samples have been preserved using some cryogenic technique by using that technique corals can be replenished later on 
I haven't followed that in detail, but there was some news in within one week only, two or three days, or at the most one week. So, however, <clears throat> the answer to this particular question is Australia, Indonesia, and Philippines. That is option D. And the last question for today's discussion. Time is also. Indian government announced a discovery with massive implications for its environment, international relations, and political scene. An untapped 5.9 million ton stash of lithium reserves located within the region of. <clears throat> the question is trying to focus your attention on latest discoveries. It is not something very important that whether you know whether lithium was discovered or not or where it was discovered or not something that you must know or that you must inculcate in your methodology for preparation to upsc is that anything that is discovered at least in our country india any new technique that is being developed in our country india you must be knowing the pros and cons the location the region where it is found lithium discovery lithium triangle is found in south america Chile, Bolivia, and Argentina. These three countries, Chile, Bolivia, and Argentina are known for lithium triangle. And India was dependent on imports of lithium from various different countries. Lithium, all your mobile phone gadgets are having lithium batteries. Lithium is having excessive use in all electronics and IT industries. Lithium was discovered in this region of Jammu and Kashmir, and it is the fifth largest reserve i think so it must be mentioned somewhere india is now the fifth largest lithium resource in the world so this region of jammu and kashmir region has discovered lithium reserves so the answer to this particular question shall be not jharkhand not odisha not arunachal rather d jammu and kashmir so jammu and kashmir becomes the right answer to this particular question right have a look at these figures chile is having 19.9 Bolivia has 39, Argentina 5.7, Australia 7.7, China 6.7, India is having 5.9. Argentina, which is a part of lithium triangle, is only having 5.7 million tons, and India is having 5.9 million tons now, right? So the answer is Jammu and Kashmir. This we come to the end of our discussion on this particular topic, this particular session that was a series on civil services examination current affairs session for prelims of 2023 we have discussed 30 questions these 30 questions are having different themes you need to go through the theme of the questions and apply that theme to each and every part of current affairs each and every part of your content whatever that you are using for your upsc prelims examination along with the current affairs things come up in newspaper things come up in magazines things come up in Yojana and Purushet and India yearbook, but we are not able to use those <coughs> topics, use those things properly for our preparation because we restrict ourselves to that particular content, that particular material, which is available in that particular newspaper or magazine. We need to do work on that. We need to explore that. Only then we can consider ourselves as a true aspirant for UPSC. Your next session will be on this particular, uh, in the continuation of this series will be on coming Friday. Best of luck for your examinations, all the best. Thank you.